Wait. Waiting. Hey. So, for all of you uh, who are wondering what's going on, I just started the stream. This is a bit different. We've got several people joining us on the stream tonight, and uh, I am the ever-present Mark D'Antonio, of course, and Amanda Curran is right nearby. Hey, Amanda. Hey, Mark. There hey, she all. is. Yeah, Amanda will be looking in the chat, so if you guys have any ideas for what you'd like to see happen tonight, and I'll explain what that means in a minute, uh, please feel free to let us know. Here's what's going on. This product here that we're looking at, this is called Universe Sandbox. And the Universe Sandbox is an excellent physics simulation of the universe. This is Universe Sandbox 2. You can see the little 2 up there in the left-hand corner. And you have tens of different simulations you can open to show different aspects of the universe in terms of current studies like you can see the trappist one system you can see other star systems you can add your own you can create specialty situations where you have a thousand planets that all collide with each other and explode it's just incredible uh and so you can do many 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 things and we're going to do a bunch of them you can do anything at your heart's desire so for instance you can open up a solar system. Okay, let's do that. Let's open up the solar system and let's uh, just look at all of our planets. All right, and here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go get our solar system. And this is the black hole one. This is the, oh man, look at all these things we can do. Holy cow, this is great. So now if we uh, come down here, let's see. I was just doing this, I did it. Oh, I know what I like, this is a good one. Remember Oumuamua? Uh, it was that asteroid that was interstellar and it came from way far out of our solar system and ended up coming through our solar system. And this is Oumuamua up here. All right. And this Oumuamua is actually a strange looking asteroid. They don't actually have a representation of it. But Oumuamua came whipping through our solar system and it came through so fast. It went right around the sun. There's the sun. Here's Mercury and, of course, Earth and Venus. And it came right around the sun and whipped on through. Now, the way Universe Sandbox works is you down here at the bottom, you have a scale, a time scale called for time compression. And this says days per second. And so we have five days per second right now. Let's just show you what happens. If I turn this down to, say, um, just a... Uh, Let's see, uh, 39, uh, yeah, say 39 minutes per second. Then hit go. Okay. You'll notice that now the simulation's running, but we don't see anything happening because in that amount of time, it's not enough to show the movement of Oumuamua, which is traveling over 160,000 uh, uh, kilometers per second in this case. And if I accelerate the time, if I do this, you'll see the... Uh, Minutes per second come up there. You see it's 39. Now we're going to increase it. And you'll watch Oumuamua start to move. Okay, here it goes. And we're following it. So I can slow it down a little bit because it's going to whip pretty hard. And now as we get closer, now we're following Oumuamua around the sun. Check it out. Here we go. This this interstellar asteroid was 10 times longer than it is than it was wide. Uh, and that's odd and it came from way above our solar system went down below our our, our solar system plane uh, and then shot out above that this vertical line shows how far below the plane it is All right and now it comes up okay uh, above the plane pretty soon and as it does so yeah you'll see that it whips off into interstellar space once again and is gone it's just amazing. This thing was crazy. Uh, and so when it did that, it left our solar system far behind. And it's heading out toward the constellation, I believe, of Pegasus. Um, Amanda, you remember when we actually did uh, the, the discussion on Oumuamua, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Oumuamua is a Hawaiian for scout. Um, messenger. Well, scout and messenger, yes. I, I saw both both in fact uh, and both people that said it were absolutely certain it was messenger and absolutely certain it was scout so I have no idea I'm not Hawaiian I don't know 
But Oumuamua is a one-time visitor, and it's, it's heading out again. And in Universe Sandbox, everything that we do in here is based on real physics. So the actual, like, here's the planet Jupiter. Now we're following Jupiter. And if we can zoom into Jupiter, all right, you'll notice it's spinning pretty fast. Well, that's because we have 1.17 months per second going by. If we slow that down, you'll watch Jupiter slow down. Okay, and now we have just 17 minutes per second going by. And you see the great red spot there? Remember that we had that, we had that sky tour live stream the other night, and Jupiter's red spot started coming out to the planet during the stream, came across, and we ended up with it was right about here. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Now, for fun, we can do some neat stuff. Okay, let's, let's try something here. We can say add. And we say, oh, look at all the things we can add. We can literally add more stars. We can add a baseball, a basketball. We can add all kinds of you know, billiard balls. But we can also add uh, whole stars that are massive stars. We can add uh, asteroids, any other planet. Or we can just grab a random asteroid. So let's just take a random asteroid for fun. I'm going to grab a random asteroid. And guess what I'm going to do? Over here, it says launch. Okay, I'm going to launch it. So that means I'm going to launch it at Jupiter. So we're going at 17 minutes per second. So let's find out how fast this launch goes. And we click it. And there it goes. And it's heading for Jupiter. In fact, it's still heading for Jupiter because uh, it, it started pretty far from Jupiter. All right. And as I click on it, all right, and I get closer. There's the asteroid heading for Jupiter, and then boom, it hits. And look at that. It actually makes a scar on Jupiter, just like Comet Shoemaker-Levy did on Jupiter. Because that's what Levy, Comet Shoemaker-Levy did. It made that scar. And there's actually a simulation here in Universe Sandbox for using or for doing the Shoemaker-Levy uh, collision. Um, so this is the kind of fun we can have in here. Um, and I know you're all looking at this saying, oh, launch Uranus, launch Mars. into." Okay, let's launch Mars into the planet, shall we? Now let's watch what happens now. This will be pretty cool. Look, we still have a scar and we still have that expanding shock wave. See that? If but, if we watch it long enough, will the scar actually heal? Yes, it does. Like if we, if we sped up the thing? Yep. Yes, it will. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, but now we're launching Mars. And Mars is going like, wait a minute, what the heck happened to me, man? What, where, what's it, what are you doing to me? And like, we can even see the shadow of Mars already on Jupiter. Because <laughs> I chose to launch it from the side that the sun's on. Oh, here we go. Now it's accelerating, of course. Oh, look, we're going to hit in almost the same spot. Check this out. Doom. Whoa. That's crazy. And notice what happened. Jupiter shrugged it off. Because that's what Jupiter does. You know, Jupiter is very, very big, 89,000 miles in diameter. And, and this planet shrugs off anything you can throw at it. Now, I've had questions, and in fact, Amanda brought this up earlier before we came on. She brought on up, up the question of what, could, what would happen, and I'll explain what's going on here in a minute. What would happen if, uh, like, a planet hit Jupiter? Would it actually go right through it because it's... It's mostly a gas giant. And I said, actually, no, it wouldn't, okay? Because what happens is what we're seeing here. As the planet goes, uh, hits Jupiter, there's a massive amount of energy released. And Jupiter's temperature right now is actually increasing dramatically. Uh, and if we look at its surface temperature, you can see that it went up high, higher than uh, 6,000 C, and it's finally starting to drop down. And if we... Uh, if we accelerate the time, okay, this is, these are the, uh, the physics panels for this. And we can actually look at a graph of the temperature and see how it's actually dropping now, finally. Because it was actually uh, way, way up there. And if I had this open before, you would have seen the temperature just go way up and then way down. It's just so cool. Um, so let's say now if we, if I was to uh, just accelerate time again, will allow the uh, temperature to drop. You can see now that the surface temperature is dropping more rapidly because we're accelerating time. Uh, but you'll notice that there's a massive scar on the face of the planet that's now visible. See that? 
-hmm. And that's going to heal over time as the cloud bands begin to uh, come back. So let's uh, accelerate time. Looks like it's getting brighter, actually. <laughs> But oh, and uh, Maddie wants to know if you can turn your mic up a bit. Oh, okay. Let me do that if I can. Are you reversing the rotation? Are you, I like, rewinding it? I'm not. I'm actually increasing uh, the timing. So I increase the, uh, the time here. So now you'll see that the temperature, uh, surface temperature on Jupiter is dropping. And look what's happening. See? It's starting to return to normal. Um, and we can actually, you know, count the number of days it takes to do that. But notice that the scar on the surface of the planet, actually on the cloud bands, right, the upper, upper deck, uh, the scar here, and I'm just going to drop this down to like almost now time so we can stare at this. The scar on this has actually been persistent for some time. And this is according to the actual physics, okay? We can see how the cloud bands are trying to distort and come back through. But for the most part, uh, they've been distorted greatly, and it will probably take some serious amount of time for them to readjust and come back to what they were. So this is what Jupiter would look like if a Mars-sized object hit it, all right? And that's uh, an interesting thing that we can do here. Now, uh, there's a number of, of things we can do beyond this, too. I'm going to change my mic a little bit just to make it a little easier to hear me. Oh, oh, it's Keith. Now that, <laughs> and so all of you know, Keith Ickes from PNK Space Imaging is here, along with Paul Gurness from PNK Space Imaging. Nice. We're still working on Paul. We're still, We're still working. working on Paul. Yeah. yeah, he's switching computers. He's going Only over to switching computers. Okay, cool. Yeah. So uh, I'm just popping back in real quick before I jump back out and That's get fine. that settled. I'm gonna now hit Jupiter with the Earth. Yes, smash. Here it goes. Hulk smash. And we already have a request coming in, nice. so I we get those. there. I love this. We're going to have fun tonight. So here, so here's the Earth, and everyone on the Earth is suddenly going, What are you doing? How oh, come I see Jupiter out of my bedroom window? <laughs> okay, and all of a sudden, it's going to be, uh, we're going to increase the time now to, uh, this Smash. is, this is uh, five minutes per second, and watch this. Now, hitting a gas giant is a little different than hitting a, a rocky planet. When you see that, it's going to be even more exciting. I promise. Here's the shadow, and here it comes, and oh no, oh, what's going to happen to the Earth? What about my car? <laughs> and then, boom, it gets absorbed into the planet, and as before, Jupiter <laughs> just shrugs it off. See, Like that? it never happened. Well, I don't know. I mean, we did have, you know, it, it did happen, <laughs> okay? Uh, very clearly it happened, and so it's actually... Um, yeah, you think? <laughs> and it heats up. See, it heats up the atmosphere a, a, a massive amount. But let's do something oh, else. Yeah. Let's let's actually pull out of this and go to the solar system. Uh, let's go to look at our orbits. Okay, this is the orbit. We do have a request coming in. Awesome. Already. Good. And guys, please yeah. keep the ideas coming because there's a lot of things we could smash into a lot of other things. I know, Possibilities and... are basically endless here. It's so and we want to smash a lot. Hulk smash. Um, Charles wants you to hit Mars with Ceres. He believes it would be an instant atmosphere. Is that t true? Can you touch on that? Uh, we can actually see if we can do that. I know we can Why do would it. that be an, a an instant atmosphere? Where is he going with that? Um, I think he's he, where he's going is uh, because Ceres has an awful lot of water on it and salts. Um, He's thinking that maybe the vaporization of Ceres uh, on the planet would actually uh, allow for a, an atmosphere to be retained by Mars. But uh, I think the, the thing that he that Charles might not remember, or maybe he is, is that uh, the problem we have is that um, when a planet hits another planet, it actually causes quite a... Uh, uh, quite a uh, heat exchange and that's a problem that uh, we have to be wary of you know because uh, it, it's it's going to generate a lot of friction a lot of heat and uh, that could uh, literally boil off any volatiles that were needed but we'll try it here's mars let's go there Zoom. come on into mars hello mars i have a simulation pause you'll notice there's a little play button down here if i hit play Hey, 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 slow down. Oh, thank you. Oh, man. Well, 
So now if anyone that. was there, they just got flung off. No, it's just uh, accelerated. So what I'm going to do is go down to, um, let's see, an hour per second. No, let's go down to some minutes. Let's say, uh, let's go down to, let's say, that's 1.4 seconds per second. Okay, that's not what I want. Uh, I want to go to just get up to minutes. Let's say, uh, okay, six minutes per second. Let's see if this if this is enough to show us what we need. Now we're going to go there and say add. And we're going to say, um, you know, any of these other things. Let's say, um, let's go. We through. want series. I know. I know. Yeah. Minor. And this is series right here. Okay. And so now we're going to take series and we're going to level it at Mars. You ready? So Are you ready, Charles? There it is. So now series is sitting there. And now we're going to start the simulation. And Yay! Here we go. Boom. Boom. Ooh, that was fast. Yes. Well, I made it go fast. I mean, I could go slower. Now. Yeah. All right. We'll do it again. We'll do it slow. But here's All what right. I want you to see. Okay. Uh, Mars has gravity. And these are fragments. And these are actual fragments, you know, that are, you know, uh, you know, they have their own mass. They have their own radius, surface temperature. Okay, all the way down, angular velocity, everything. And so what happens is, obviously, Mars got creamed here uh, by this thing. And you'll notice that Mars uh, has been, uh, had its rotation altered a little bit, too. Um, but we'll slow this down. And we'll yeah, I, I want to. Okay. Yeah, sl slow them all down a little bit. You can speed them up again. We can do it a few times. But yeah, you're right. Um, yeah. You know, I want to see exactly what's going on. Okay. Cause it, it looked, it almost looked like it was like a little play or something. It looked like there was like, it was being held on a wire Yeah. and someone was like moving it. Did you see that? Yeah. But that's a, that was the path that was showing up. All right. Yeah. So here's what we're going to do then. We're going to, instead of, uh, let's say, uh, let's do, uh, not four hours per second. Let's do, what do we do? We did minutes, right? Let's do, I did six minutes per second earlier. Let's see what we can, let's see, well, we can always accelerate it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say um, 4.76 seconds per second. So we're going to go four to one speed. And I'm going to now add a minor planet. And that minor planet is going to be, see, minor. These are all the things you can add. You can add another planet. You can add a star. You can add, uh, you know, the common objects that you've used before. You can use moons. You can use minor planets like we will. You can add objects like teapots and basketballs and so forth. You can add whole galaxies. Because why not? Yeah, black holes. Uh, you can add uh, objects you create. You can add rings. Okay, and you can do this, which is cool. Uh, launch. And we're going to be launching <clears throat> uh, a minor planet, but we're going to do it this way. We're going to say series here, and we're going to launch it, actually. Now, here's what I, I just want to show you this. I could say orbit, all right? And now if I said orbit, okay, we can actually then create series in an orbit around Mars. All right. Actually, Charles just asked that. Uh, will the program ch uh, show changes in the resulting orbit? Absolutely. It handles the That's gravity cool. and the physics perfectly. See, this is with this simulator, we can bring a pretend Nibiru into our solar system to see just what would happen if a massive planet came in. And you see how it upsets the orbits everywhere for years before you ever get to see it. And this is the kind of thing that I try to tell people, but you know, they still want to believe it. And they have these little, these, these glaze over their eyes. And it's like, yes, I believe in Nibiru. Yeah. Well, okay, fine. Uh, you, you believe in Nibiru, but it's not real. So anyway, let's just take series here and get rid of it. And let's go over here and do our thing. So now we're going to collide series with matters. And we're going to do it like this. We're going to say launch. We're going to take series and we're going to do this. Okay. So now it's on its way and there's an ominous shadow. You do not want to be under that shadow on Mars. <laughs> You're going to like this because this actually uh, does some really interesting. Uh, there's some interesting graphics associated with this. When this, when this collides, you can watch the planet disintegrating slowly over the planet and it does it. And you'll see a shockwave extending out. It's just beautiful. Well, I remember we played around with this before. And 
I think it was just asteroids. I don't think it was anything major, major. Yeah. Or maybe it was a really big asteroid and it hit Earth, and it was slow motion, slow enough that you yeah. could just, I don't know. I what guess it must do? have been causing, like, earthquakes and tsunamis and everything. And, like, you could see different pieces of the Earth lighting up. Like, it wasn't just... Yeah. It Look, wasn't just, like, a smooth kind of spread. It was kind of, like, right. all sorts of areas were all affected at the same time. Mm -hmm. And they'd be popping up in... Pause this so that you, when you're done talking, because I had something to say. But uh, Oh. No, go ahead. Finish. Sorry. No, no. I'm I want you to finish. I'm done. Well, what I was trying to say was, uh, this is 1.1, you know, roughly 1.1 seconds per second. So in other words, it's almost real time. This is about how slow it would be. You'd see it lingering in your sky for like this amount of time. Okay. That's kind of how that would work. So I'm going to speed it up to get it to Mars and slow it down, uh, as soon as it actually gets there. So you can actually see what it does. There's sound with this too, by the way, and I don't know. Uh, why we don't get the sound but uh we're not getting the sound at the moment and i apologize for that and we might hear it um but man it's it's just beautiful rumbling and stuff as these things get destroyed it's just great i'm gonna just follow series actually all right here we go and we move in series is approaching mars oh no the end is nigh It's almost like you want to play classical music, right, Amanda? Isn't it like you want to play classical music right now? Uh, I'm thinking of the score to your movie. <laughs> I don't know. Da, da, uh, da, da, blum, blum. Da, 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 blum, no. Blum. Not no, that one. Not the Blue Danube Waltz? No. Right. Da, 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 da. Oh, also Sprock's Zarathustra, which is the uh, the beginning of that same movie, 2001 A Space Odyssey. I figured it was from that movie, but I didn't know the name of it. Very good, very good. You got it, though. Uh -huh. that's, that's cool. All right, so we're going up. We're going to go to about a, just, a, just do it in real time here. Uh, we can change it to uh, real time, too, directly, but... Um, Let's just do it like this so you can just watch the slow motion how this all happens. I just got to say, I think I think I mentioned it last time we streamed this. Um, there it goes. Yep. For anyone that's ever played Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, wow. that was the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. There's a moon with a face hanging over the town, and... and you have three days before it crashes in. There it goes. Look at that. And that's what it looks like. Wow. It gets closer and closer and bigger and bigger, and that's you're it. just waiting in doom. That's right. And, of course... Like, what could you do? What could you do, really? Just well, watching that get closer and closer. I know, and look at the shockwave already moving out from it. See that? Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing you can do, literally. But this is almost real time. So, look at This is how long it would take for Ceres to, like, vanish into Mars. You know? And, and this is actually just a little faster than it would take. All right, and now what happens is, and this is the part that the program can't do uh, quite uh, perfectly yet. Uh, it can't do the debris associated with this, and um, and um, I'm, I'm like kind of stuck here because it won't let me do anything. It's doing some funky graphic stuff that's not supposed to be there, so I'm kind of hung up in here right now. Ah uh, well, so we'll just have to wait and see. Maybe I can actually accelerate us out of this. It was too much for the computer, apparently. <laughs> Even my system, which is a very high-end system. Maybe I can just, if I can pull away at all. Yeah. These things here are, are supposed to be um, debris, but I think we're kind of inside the debris, so it's looking kind of funky there. Yeah, there's the impact scar. And I don't know what's going on over there. I can't get out of this here. I'm trying to 
Moon yeah, it out. seems a little glitchy. I don't know if all those oh, you know what? beams would be all over the place like that. But... Yeah, no, as I was saying, that's not right. Mm -hmm. But there's always... It looks cool. It does. There's always the ability to open up another solar system. And that's what I'm doing. Ah, and here we go. And now we have another solar system back. And we start pause so that I can grab something I want to look at. So let's go back to Mars. All right. And we zoom into Mars again. And now let's do this again. Let's actually do a, what we're going to fling. Uh, let's see. Right just wants to know what it would look like uh, coming into Earth's atmosphere. Ah, hey, that's a good idea. We already kind of looked at what it looks like at Mars. But why don't we go and pummel our planet. Really hit home for the viewers. Yeah, right? <laughs> you know, very That's a pun because we live on Earth. Right. There we are. Now, uh, of course, if I start to play, okay, you'll see that it's spinning rapidly because, obviously... Aim south. No offense. Aim south. <laughs> well, uh, I'm, I'm up north, so... Well, I was thinking of wiping, wiping um, out Canada, but I guess, okay, I can do that. <laughs> No one ever goes for Canada. Come on, get out of here. Hey, are you kidding me? What about you got a, a large reservoir up there that's the result of a meteor strike? So aliens don't like Canadians? No. I didn't Is say that, that what you're saying? I'm saying that you have a large meteor that struck up in Canada. And, uh, oh, by the way, that, that's the other thing about Universe Simulator, uh, this, this, this Universe Sandbox. Um, it's actually... Uh, you know, if you go to one to one and you don't do this acceleration, it will actually show you the real uh, night and day. So it can act like an actual virtual planetarium too. It's very cool. The stars are all real. The stars are in the right places. That's another thing about it. There's Hawaii. Oh, look, there's Kilauea erupting over there. <laughs> all right. So let's throw, uh, you want to throw series at it again? I'll throw series at sure. the earth. Okay, we're going to do that. We're going to throw a series at the Earth. And I'm going to go down to uh, 16 seconds per second. We'll go from here. Let's see what this does. Because D has a question. Well, oh, there we go. a question, but I know I know you can do it. So, okay. We'll do that. And I skipped her just because we were launching series again. So oh, I figured. I'm going to slow us down. As soon as we're ready to hit, I'm going to slow us way down. Because this is crazy because... Look what I'm destroying. This you can... Yeah, you can appreciate. Right now, people know. in India are going to all, like, be crazy, right? What are you doing? I'm sorry. Not my fault. So this is... So this is, this is again, this is like the... Uh, I'm going to pull out now a little bit just so we can see what's going on. Uh, so there you go. This is real time. This is how it would look in real time. So you'd have plenty of time to see this thing coming in and hitting. And let's get it close enough to see what happens. Has any asteroid this big hit Earth? Like the one no. that took out the dinosaurs? Was it bigger? No. No, it was only a few few, few miles across, not even. Okay, so, so this is like so never right. happened before. Oh. Let's Come see. on, what's oh. it doing? I, I tried to pull away and it just still didn't let me. What is going on here? A little planetarium doesn't want to. This is not helpful because I used to I used to, I was able to do up close before without any problem so I'm gonna do this again and I'm gonna figure out what I'm doing wrong because I have been able to do this before what are you doing stop oh, this is just not earth good. was spared momentarily very, but we're launching another one we're gonna wipe it out anyway oh you know what what Ooh, I don't want to ruin anything yet because I think I know something that you can launch. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I saw it in the list before. Okay. I got to think of a good place to launch it, though. All right. Give me really good ideas of places to launch something. I have the object in mind. I need a location. Come on, guys. Okay. Give me some good ideas. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to... Uh... Hey, where's, where's Keith, man? He's still working on, mm. and people are saying I'm loud. I'm sorry, guys. I just turned 
Well, and I'm not. Well, that's no good. All right, let's try this. Let's do this. Okay, I'm turning it way down, guys. Okay, so let's do... Oh, I'm going to move my mic, too. I don't know. Hopefully that helps. Sorry, guys. Okay, let's do this. All right, we'll do it almost real time to start, and then I will change it off of here, and I'm going to back way out. And we're going to hit right in between, right in the middle here, right where the uh, day and night side are matched up. And actually, let's just use an asteroid rather than series. Let's do a small one, okay? Series is a minor planet. It's a dwarf planet. Uh, let's do... What do we got here? Uh, we have many more than this. Let's do a rich, regular random asteroid. So how can I do that? I want to do, uh, I don't want to launch that. Reset launch keys. There we go. I'm not going to do that. Let's see. Oh, we can also create a ring around the earth as well. That's fun. Uh, minor planets. Give me a good suggestion, Keith. What's that? Give me a good suggestion. What's that? Um, where we can lob something. Oh, <laughs> you want me to do that? Okay. Right, Wait, what we are go. we? What are we currently doing? Oh, we're, we're uh, just launching a a random asteroid at the Earth. Yeah. Like a big asteroid? Well, not this time. It's actually a very small asteroid, in fact. Okay. Um, but I'm gonna get closer to the Earth and launch it. Ooh. Yeah, this is Make an asteroid hit New York. I'll leave that request anonymous, but if you want to take a guess at who requested it. I no, that might get you in trouble. Don't do it. I take it back. Doesn't matter. Everyone can It's only it. in public chat. Everyone yeah, right, no, right? <laughs> yeah, I know, one. but if he's guessing he might say Oh, I bet it was so and so. No, oh. they'd be like right, so what two, to one, two to one New speed. York? All right, this is at two are we going speed. to New York with that? Yes, we are. Ah, oh, there you go. We're going to smash it. We're smashing how, it. How does my volume sound now, Keith? Do you know? Better. Yeah, it almost sounded like you could just like pull the mic like further away. You know, because it was like doing that kind of peak where you would hit certain things and it would like redline like really bad. Ah. But uh, yeah, it does sound better now. Okay, this is Orcus P. It's heading into. Uh, Not it New York. Well, it's it's actually it was <laughs> heading for New York, and you can see it's curving toward New York because see gravity okay. Okay. is doing its dirty work. But the Earth is also mm -hmm. rotating during this time, so uh, mm -hmm. where it starts mm -hmm. and where it finishes might be two different things. Right. Yep. Right. I like what you're doing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. As long okay. as it doesn't hit Sydney or well, Toronto, it'll it'll affect Toronto. You know, what we're gonna do. I want you to watch the uh, shock wave here. Okay, when it hits. All right, see that? Uh, as you watch the shock. Yeah, wave, it got me. <laughs> it, well, it got a lot of people. See, here's the thing: it, that that shock wave is uh, extensive, and also that's a debris cloud that's throwing up there. See? See that right there? That's a debris cloud, and this debris cloud is going to be filled with things that are going to go up into the sky. Look, it's already gone all the way out to California. This is uh, at twice real time, by the way. I don't know, four times real time, five times. So an asteroid that large uh, will do that. And then these fragments will leave. Some will go away from the Earth and never come back, but others are going to fall back and hit the Earth. All right. So even people around the world who didn't even know or, or feel this asteroid hit are going to see on their horizon this red this this reddish glow heading their way and they're gonna go what is that and they're gonna see this massive uh fire come you know toward them now you'll see the secondary impacts of other things like there's a there's a fragment there that's uh it's uh heading down and is gonna hit somewhere you can see several secondary impacts there's one there and it just continues and this this the shockwave. Now I'm going to go a little faster again. We're getting five times real time here. If we go faster though, okay, you can see again, secondary impacts hitting here and there. 
all right? The secondary impacts, now the entire United States, that one asteroid hitting in New York has wiped out the entire United States. I mean, yes, there's still lights on because the program doesn't know how to shut the lights off. <laughs> but see this? Okay, all these little fragments come down and, and strike the Earth anyway. And it's, it's very, it could be very likely that when they hit the Earth again, uh, they will you know, heat up the atmosphere so much that the Earth will be incandescent um, and very, very hot. It could be you know, 1,000 degrees, 2,000 degrees in the atmosphere when, when it's done. Uh, and you know the the ground could end up being hotter than Venus. You know, so that's that's pretty bad. Yet over on the other side, Australia is like, what happened? <laughs> hey, what, what happened? Is anybody? And something happened. I my, my call to to uh, to uh, Pennsylvania to talk to Keith uh, was cut off. And that's why, because uh, Connecticut and Massachusetts and Pennsylvania, they're all gone. But you'll notice, you see, these shockwaves are traveling, and these shockwaves traveling across the ocean are going to also do something else. And do you know what that will be, Amanda? What are these uh, shockwaves going to cause? I'm thinking tsunamis. You are thinking correctly. Um, I because actually I was just thinking that look at all these impacts, the yeah. the orange or whatever color it is that we're seeing that's only shockwaves. Like it won't actually show the water moving on the planet. No. Like the program won't pick up actual tsunamis occurring or anything. Just right. the shockwaves, yeah. Right. That's still but, really cool. But you will, if you look at the parameters of the Earth, you'll actually see what happens. You'll actually see changes. You'll see like the temperature might rise and so forth. Let's take a look at the surface temperature now. Right now, it's, it'll still water looks... pressure in certain areas, if you zoom in on them, we did. No, unfortunately, I wish you know, it did that. But look at that. I know I'm asking I'm asking a lot. No, it it no, does an ask, awful lot already. You should ask the things that that, that uh, you think of. But look at how the shockwave's expanding. I mean, this is just absolutely incredible. And so far, nothing in Australia has happened. Okay, we do have this one little fragment right here. And where is that one going? Is it in orbit? <laughs> no, that's definitely uh we got some comments. Uh, Rachel's brings up a good, a good question. Well, not question, comment, I guess. Uh, people were taking guesses at what that would cause. Uh, D said tsunami. Rachel's toad saying winds. Would the shock waves going from, like, water to land cause, like, hurricanes and tornadoes and stuff? Well, it would definitely cause massive windstorms. Okay. Is that it? It wouldn't have enough power to... There's, or like, well, I mean, I guess I don't know how the there's form, a, but... There it is. See, I, Australia thought it was left out. And then that one fragment hit. Well, it would actually cause some phenomenal, um, you know, high power winds. And the wind would be equal to or in excess of tornadic winds, you know, tornado winds. Uh, but, of course, you know, over the course of, of the days that in, in come, uh, those winds would diminish because the firestorm itself, see, all these things hitting will cause fires. Okay, well, you can see Australia was almost entirely covered with a shockwave. And you still see a shockwave up at the top of the Earth here, still making its way over Europe. Uh, because those are secondary impacts, you see. I mean, this is just, you know, this is, well, I can, it's kind of a macabre thing to do. But uh, it is actually really fascinating, you know. So now some actually hit, hit the bottom of the planet. So Antarctica is getting... Um, uh, it's uh, it's freeze off. <laughs> There's more stuff coming. See, so it's stuff would hit. Now let's back out a bit and check out the debris cloud. This is the debris thrown up by this thing. Now is this exact? Well, of course not. I mean, it, it's just hypothetical, but it's very close to what might happen. It's very close to what might happen. Let's uh, accelerate now and see how the Earth is going to look. Check that out. Kabam, bam, 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 bam. It's literally uh, being hit so hard. Absolutely. So crazy. in real time, how long is this lasting? Months? Years? Yeah, we actually have... Um, there is a uh, timer which tells us how long uh, it... And, and I didn't actually... I don't think I... I don't know if I actually... Uh, hmm... 
I don't know if I actually uh, did this. Yeah, I didn't do it. I'm sorry. I, I could have started the timer to tell you how long it would actually be. Okay, uh, next. Oh, look at this guy going. Yeah, where's he going? See? Look. Ooh, Just when you thought it was wow. over. I see another one in the distance, yep. but... And another. See? see here, will here, it hit the... What that one is. Uh, and this guy, little guy is going to be... Uh, you know, he's going to be doing something. Oh, there he goes. And boom. Oh, wow. See? So, you know, and none of none of them would ever get trapped in an orbit. They would all fall back to Earth. Yeah, see, to get into an orbit requires a real special setup of circumstances. You have to make a perfectly you have to make a perfect have a perfect speed at a perfect altitude for that, uh, you know, for that altitude, have the perfect speed rather for that altitude and it's not likely that many of these would. Now, what could happen though, in the other hand is we could have, we could end up with something like this, where we we have a, uh, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, let's one. see, let's see, um, let's just do this, I mean, just for fun. We could, we could have like a, a, a ring around the planet, and I guess uh, I thought there was a ring there. I've added rings, how come this wasn't showing? All right, well, we could do it a different way. Uh, hang on, I thought I had, I, I, I wanted to add a ring. I'll do this way. How about this one? Hmm. All right, well, I guess, uh, I guess we'll have to do something else because I thought I could add a ring. Around the planet. I know I can add a ring. I'm just not sure why I couldn't at this point. Because I've just been adding rings to planets left and right. But alright, no worries. I'll figure it out. Okay. Um, D had an awesome question. And like I said, I knew, I know that you can actually pull this off. Um, D wants to know what would happen if, uh, what would happen to Earth if the moon came a little closer? Why don't we find out? I was hoping you'd say that. Yeah. So, let's see. Let's start up a solar system. Or actually, no, wait. You know what? I got a better idea. Let's actually just get... Let's see if we can have... Okay, we have Earth and Moon. Here we go. Here's the Earth and Moon system. All right. Now, there's the moon out there. That's actually the right distance for the moon, you know. I know it looks like it's too far away, but... Let's give you an idea how far it really is. All right? You see that? It's actually pretty good. Now, what I'm going to do is let's do this. Let's change some of the settings. All right? So, for instance, we know that we have a, uh, let's see if we get this orbital period. I don't want to change it. Orbital period, I want to change the uh, distance. Um. <laughs> Hello, Keith. Ooh. I knew it. I knew it was there. <laughs> uh, what are we blowing up now? I'm trying to actually uh, just uh, I'm taking I'm taking the moon, and I want to try and change the uh, that's the distance of the moon. I want to change the uh, distance of the moon, and because I have the simulator paused, I'm gonna change the distance. Let's change it to a hundred thousand. Change it to a hundred thousand instead of three hundred and some odd. Okay, so now it's closer. Now it should be orbiting, but let's just find out if it's going to continue to orbit here. <laughs> yeah, so now it's orbiting closer. All right, and uh, actually, it looks like it's entered a highly elliptical orbit, but that's kind of cool because I want you know, I want you to see what it does here. Which, uh, did Paul was Paul able to join us yet? Yes, Paul like. here. Hey, Paul Hi, is Paul. here. Hi, Hello, Paul. Linda. Hey, Mark. Welcome from P and K, the P. He's yes. the P. <laughs> the man himself with the That's telescope right. down in Miami, yeah. keeping afloat. Yeah, it's actually cleared up a little bit down here tonight. Cool. 
You, the poor guy probably just went through hell trying to get that Skype to work. <laughs> I know, yeah, right? I did. I don't know why, but I had it all set up. And but you know me with cameras, I never use this camera, so you yeah, know, that's why. That's cool. Well, what we're doing, Paul, is basically we're playing around in the universe sandbox and smashing planets together and and whatnot. So just basically like a kickback night because everybody seems to be cloudy. But uh, that's kind of cool that you're that you're actually clearing down there. So you're telling me there's a chance. There's a chance, yeah. I mean, there's some thin clouds that are going by and then clearing up and going by, but nothing like uh, better than last night. So we'll see how it goes. Sweet. So, so what are we doing with the moon in the in the, in the orbit here? <laughs> I was actually uh, just trying to bring it close enough so that uh, it would be within the Roche lobe and, and start getting destroyed by the Earth. Oh, that sounds good. You know. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Hulk smash. Well, Eventually, that's what's going to happen, though, right, Mark? Yes. It's going to go way out, and then it's going to come back again, right? Oh, actually, by the time it gets farther out, you know, it's moving away about two centimeters a year from our planet now. Uh, and this is a false orbit because I already brought it way closer. Um, you know, but this uh, eventually, it's going to get, it's going to drift away, and people, you know, were thinking, well, gee, maybe one day we won't have tides anymore uh, because, oh, well, from the moon anyway, because it'll be too far away. Well, technically that could be true, but the problem is that the sun is going to die before that day. <laughs> yeah. And now, weren't our, weren't our tides a lot higher millions of years ago when the moon was closer? Yeah, there was a there was a, a, a higher tidal uh, a variation. Um, you know, Bay of Fundy was probably crazy. Of course, the Bay of Fundy didn't exist, but, you know, uh, that's still uh, still true that the, uh, the uh, tides were a lot different. Boy, we're getting wild uh, shadows in there. There we are. But of course, it wouldn't happen every day. Now, when you brought the moon closer, is it going to be smushing Earth as it ro as it goes around? No, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to actually. Uh, I mean, the orbit. Do you know like what I mean? I do. Oops! <laughs> <laughs> you just destroyed. You just destroyed humanity. I did. Oh my! Did you see what happened there? Oh jeez. Yeah, we're all dead. I, I kind of went. I went so fast that uh, just because of a, a guy with a computer, we have all died. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> uh, what I did was I actually uh, I didn't realize uh, that. Well, I did realize, but I just did it. the uh, The calculations are only as accurate as the speed within which you live, and uh, if we try to do it uh, in a way that's a little bit faster, sometimes the calculations are inaccurate. Uh, so, for instance, if I want to bring the moon closer, okay, that's the moon, and we grab the, the data for the moon, we say motion, uh, and we look at the different elements here. Uh, the orbital period is 27.3 days, semi-major axis, etc. Um, you know, I just want to make the moon uh, closer, so what I want to do is do this. I'm going to actually take the moon, right? take the moon, and delete it. So now, all of a sudden, everyone on Earth is going, where'd my tides go? Well, and dead. We're all dead. Right. But no. So what I'll do is this. I'm going to bring <laughs> us down to the Earth. Okay. And Earth is happy, spinning away. Uh, crazy it's here. flooding. Um, yeah, right? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, I'm going to add, and orbit uh, a moon. And I can do that. Let's see, where's the moons, 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 moons. Oh, moons, are you going to go to a bigger moon or a smaller moon? No, we're going to go to our moon. Let's oh. See, uh, see, now, the distance, we can actually set a distance here. Uh, let's try nice and close. Okay, we're going to orbit it right here. All right, and let's see what happens. Uh-oh, look what's happening. Oh, great. Oh. Now, look what's happening. See, let's slow this down. I want to explain. That's what I wanted to see. The last okay. time we got, you got a little too yeah. fast. Did it automatically name the new satellites? It, you know, it fragments, you know. Uh -huh. But see, here's what happens. Now, <laughs> if you get funny. too close, then the gravitational field... I'm going to go right to the moon itself here. The gravitational field... Look, I already got hit. On this side of the Earth is higher than on this side of the Earth. And it, it literally pulls the moon apart. It pulls the planet or whatever apart. Oh, come on. Not this crap again. I don't even know what this is doing. Ooh, ooh, disco astronomy. I have no idea what this is. This is like a bug. Oh man, you know this is not right. This never happened before. 
You broke the universe. I did. So I'm going to bring it back again. <sighs> I have no idea why it's doing that. I mean, I've never had that problem before. That's This is like... Maybe busted. this is like NASA's new technology, and they're trying to shoot the asteroids with lasers. Yeah. <laughs> Break them up before it destroys Earth. Yeah, right? Okay. Pew, pew. Yeah. Well, let's do this again. All right, so now we come back. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I have no idea what they're doing. So let's see. Uh, let's go back up to our Mooney. And let's lo not launch. Let's orbit. And we're going to put it. Um, we'll put it out here and see. Oh, my. Let's see what that does. All right. So right now we're not, we're not, uh, we're not actually, uh, playing the simulation. We're just setting it, um, in this mode here where it's just waiting. And now we go. And, and we have a nice orbit as we go along and it is gently rounding the earth in the fashion that it does. That's it. And then all of a sudden, dead. Yeah. Mark, I got a question. Yeah, Paul. Um, now the Earth is slowing down, right? The spin? Yeah, the uh, that's the... Uh, uh, Rotation? Conservation of uh, momentum happening there. Yeah. Our days used to be a lot shorter. It used to spin faster, right? Correct. That's, that's right. Okay. So in relationship to the moon pulling away from us... Yeah. How fast is our rotation slowing down? I don't know the exact number. That's something that uh, I can look up and, and figure out. We're about to get hit again here. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's uh, that's Deimos, which is one of uh, Mars' moons. And you'll see that it's going to be raping the Earth there pretty quick uh, and as it goes to the upper atmosphere. Uh, it might actually it might be okay. It might be just a very low But Wait, did the moon spawn that? No, 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 I did Oh, okay. I thought, like, uh, for a second there, I thought it actually shot off the moon. I was like, what? No, 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 no. I put the moon in okay. a spot where it wouldn't be destroyed, but oh, I put okay. it... See, see, how, see what's going on? Oh, my on? God, it's following the moon. The moon is pulling Deimos along, and I want to, sh I want to do that. It. It's like that yeah. dog that, you know, you go down the street, and the dog yeah. starts following you. Yeah, yeah. So see what's happening? There it is. Deimos becomes the wild card. And so uh, I'm going to... I mean, the moon could actually stabilize Deimos. Uh, and, and what we see with, with many, uh, some of the moons in the solar system is that they fall into a, what, what's called a resonance. And I'm trying to see if I can get the moon how, to bring Deimos into some How cool would it be that, like, Deimos get caught up and actually start orbiting the moon? That would be weird. Yeah, actually, we can uh, see how that works. We can no, no, no. Let's just see through time, see if it like, naturally happens. Okay, well, we can try that, shall we? You know? Yeah, I mean, if we don't, it's gonna get destroyed. Oh, <laughs> oh Lord, oh. it's a uh, it's a near hit. Oh Jesus. Uh oh, and see now, Deimos. And got, there it goes. Oh, no, no, Deimos is now in a okay, okay, is in a, uh, relatively stable in that elliptical orbit. And now, see, this is mm -hmm. a, this might be a resonance, where for a number of orbits, uh, it goes in this ellipse until the moon does a certain thing, and then it does that long set of orbits. Uh, and some of some of Saturn's moons do that in the rings. <laughs> uh, so it's pretty crazy. And then we have the moon, and then see, Deimos gets pulled a little bit, and that's going to tend to circularize the orbit, uh, especially if the moon comes along and right about here. This is where Deimos gets the this, this follow-through, and now we get Deimos doing the follow-through. See what I'm saying? So we That's crazy to watch. Right, and if we accelerate it, you'll see that we've created this, uh, this crazy, I think... Uh, well, predictable almost. Well, it is predictable specifically, perhaps. And and so, so you see what's happening now is the moon catches up. Then this happens. See what's happening? Watch this. Okay, it catches up and then whoa, pulls it in. And now Deimos is, is uh, coming in a little more. And now it's becoming, oh, look it. <clears throat> uh -oh. Deimos goes out. And it looks like long-term Deimos is going to be uh, zipping around like this. And it could be circularized or the moon could be affecting it in a way that's going to um, eject it or uh, cause it to hit the earth. Let's add another one. Oh, we will. Let's just watch. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh there geez. we go. <laughs> and now look what we got. And now it's back to this precessing thing. Look, right? Oh, it's dead. Oh, yep. oh. Done. And it finally hit the moon. So this tells you, by the way, 
That so hold on a what second. Just, What's wait happening? Wait a second. What you just, what we just saw? Okay, don't don't lose your question, Amanda. Um, what we just saw is something that could have actually happened. Not Deimos per se, but an asteroid could have been captured by the Earth Moon system, gone through this dance, and then over a course of a few years, you know, billions of years, um, gone through this and then finally struck the moon, which could be responsible for creating some of the largest areas on the moon that we see. So this could have happened already. See what I mean? So this is something that could have happened. But go ahead, Amanda. I'm sorry. What? Well, no, I have to butt in because I always come up with way too many questions and I think I'll your forget. questions are wonderful, but go ahead. Well. And by the way, the moon is way too close. The moon is literally far too close to the Earth here. This is not how far it is. The moon is literally 20 to 30 times farther away in general. I just put it right outside that limit where it'll be destroyed by the uh, Earth's gravity. But go ahead. Okay, uh, with Deimos. Yes. Uh, what was happening to Earth every time it switched its um, orbit? <laughs> good, good question. Deimos, uh, Deimos will have an effect on Earth, but the gravity of Deimos is very small. And so I was trying to use something that was small enough. Um, and um, so nothing would have happened uh, to the Earth. You know, obviously, maybe the, the day might have changed on the Earth. I'm not sure. You know what? So we'll leave these up so we can see anything. So can we can we do something real quick, Mark? Yeah. Can we um, increase uh, the moon's mass by two? Yeah, absolutely. Right now, and just see yeah. what it would do. Yeah, we can we can do this. We can stop the simulation, grab the moon, grab its data, and say, okay, it's uh, let's do this. It's, and while Mark's mass... doing that in chat, what do you guys think's gonna happen? See, it's it's one times now the size of the moon. It's one one moon moon one moon gravity. So I'm gonna make it a two. Yep. All right. Now you'll see a little bit of difference. It gets a little bit more massive. It gets a little larger in radius. Okay. Let's see what happens. Are you ready? You might have to zoom in a little bit because I think it will show the effects on Earth. Because I think it'll show the tides actually where they're hitting. I think when we did this before, it actually showed the tides pulling up on the continents. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure it did. Okay, well let's take a look. Now, many uh, yeah, wanna, find out. Should we slow it down first though, just to give yeah, us I mean, a little more time? Yeah. Let's say uh, two minutes per second passes. All right, let's see if this does anything. And by the way, you'll notice that the moon did not escape collisions with uh, the Deimos particles. That, that's where Deimos hit. Isn't that cool? So now the mass of the moon is twice or times two. Uh -huh. And that, that will affect the Earth uh, as well. But okay, from the top, moon. okay, you see the Earth and the Moon system. Um, you know, the Moon's going around the Earth this way, counterclockwise, and the Earth is spinning counterclockwise. So uh, it's pretty interesting. Now, if I increase the time frame here, go a little bit. A question in P and K chat that I just happened to jump on. By the way, guys, if you guys really want to ask real-time questions, the best thing to do, I posted the link there is to jump over to Mark's channel over here. Um, anybody watching in the P and K uh, oh, stuff. Oh, you're uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about it. <laughs> um, yep. But uh, astronomy and related video asks, why is the moon, the Muno, but I'm guessing it meant moon, not visible the hours before the eclipse starts? Well, look at that. What's the definition of an eclipse? Okay, it's when the moon's shadow uh, is crossing over the Earth, of course. But how do we see the moon's shadow? It's because the moon is on the same side as the sun. And it's passing between us and the sun. Just like we saw there. Look at that. Yeah, and if we, uh, if I, and when it comes around, I'll show you what I mean, obviously. I know, but just look at how it's, uh, look oh, yeah, at the orbit. the orbit. Yeah, so here we see this. Now we, we have this, okay, hey. Oh, um, I wasn't even, uh, I was elsewhere, sorry. All right, so now when it comes around again, um, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So when you pause it, okay, okay, you see that? The reason we don't see it is right here. Okay, now in this particular simulation, we don't have the sun. This is just the Earth-Moon system. But the sun is, is uh, it's implied. But look, you don't see the moon, but the moon is right there. Okay, that's why, because the moon is, uh, it's basically new moon whenever it's going to be a solar eclipse. 
Yeah, and you got to remember, you're also trying to find it through the atmosphere as well of Earth. That's bright blue, right. you know, but where you're. you're not it's not really it. capable of seeing it on New right. Moon regularly during. <laughs> no, we can't see it day, moon so. anyway. Yeah, that's right. And then off it goes. So let's uh, let's do something else here. Let's uh, let's take uh, Phobos, and let's put it in orbit like this now. And let's actually let's put it in a close orbit. Rounder. Like in between the two, oh. or didn't? That's what you do with diamonds, right, Demos? Yeah, I didn't. But uh, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go like this. Tink. All right, and now we have Phobos in that orbit, and of course, um, it's orbiting. And our, remember, our moon is twice. <laughs> right, mass, but, so. but, it's, but it's also. See, here's what's happening, Kate. Oh boy. Uh, there we go. Oh, we got whipped way out there, and, and there we are. Oh, they're already gone. <laughs> oh no! Huh? It's like yeah, I'm we... out later. Well, yeah, and it might very well be ejected. Yeah, it's true. But let's it, accelerate. And that was that was a pretty high gravitational whip there. Yeah, it's gone. Well, screw you! I'm going to Mars. Let's see. But yeah, check it out. The moon through space. Now, now you see, the faster we go, the less accurate the simulation is, so we have to be careful. Wait, wait, wait. Is that basing upon our whole solar system's movement, or is that Earth actually moving like... This is this is actually based on the fact that uh, the simulation is showing only the Earth and the Moon, but it's assuming, it's why it's implied, that everything else is there. Okay, so it's not like dragging the Earth further and further away from the Sun? No, there is no Sun. Okay. See, we don't have a Sun in the simulation, but it's implied. Uh, oh, okay. In other words, it's there, but it's just been rendered invisible just for purposes of, right. you know, increasing your computational uh, speed, you know, for this particular setup of stuff. So, yes, yeah, so Phobos going in between Earth and Moon, it would get ejected. What does that tell you? It tells you that maybe some, there might have been asteroids that were uh, there. So, like, let's just put a whole bunch of them in, you know? Maybe we did have these early on. Maybe early on there was a bunch of stuff that formed out here, right? And now what, what we get? Let's let's just go and see what what happens. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I was on. Uh, it is running. I just so you can see the little trails. So you have trails on, so you can see the little trails of the things. Hmm. Now here's the thing. This actually is a really good illustration. If you look at this object and you see the length of its trail, you see that. You no. see that this one's actually longer. There's a reason for that. Obviously, it's because of the fact that. The, the closer object has to move faster to stay in an orbit. So if we turn off the trails and turn them on, and now we watch the... Oops, sorry. I thought it was going to do them, uh, you know... I thought it was going to just reinitiate them, but it, it, there's a, there is a, 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 there's a parameter for that that I didn't do. But see, that trail is longer than this guy, and that's how this works. This is moving faster than this, and we can see that if we accelerate this. See that? And then, of course, it's going to hit the moon or it gets pulled out by the moon. Who's banging on there? Their, uh, there it is. Boom. Me, I'm typing um, astronomy into the P and K chat. So the two inner ones were swept up by the moon. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. Okay. Can we throw Jupiter at all of it? Yes, we can. Or let's do something really dense, something really a black hole. Rocky. Let's do a rocky planet. Let's throw a rocky planet in the mix. Yeah, that's Earth. Uh, Mercury. Actually, we had a question from chat. Okay, what do you got? Uh, Mario wants to ask. Sure. Uh, what is the smallest object that can knock Earth out of its orbit, if that's even possible? Oh, Mario Lafreniere, I remember you. Yes, nice to hear from you. Nice to see you, Mario. Um, the smallest object that could knock the Earth uh, out of our orbit. Well, I guess uh, what really you're asking is uh, how fast would something have to hit the Earth to move it out of its orbit uh, without actually destroying it? And uh, I think you, you, it would have to be something that's pretty massive but small. So, like... Uh, Maybe a neutron star could affect us, uh, and maybe a, you know, a, a super dense uh, planet could affect us. But uh, oh, and dead. 
Oh, I saw it. You were looking at that. I know. Yeah. Keith is like, I can't wait to see something hit. I want something to hit. Something has to hit. Well, yeah. I mean, that's the whole fun of, you I know, know, I, I, I know. appreciate the lesson. Don't get me wrong. Oh, no, but... no, that's fine. So now if we do this, let's see. Uh oh, now we got another one out there. See that guy? That... Seems legit. Yeah, it is legit. There we go. So, you know, there's a lot going on. Okay, so now a lot of Phobos. Um, meanwhile, Earth is, you know, being totally uh, destroyed here. Oh, that's okay. I mean, the Earth is uh, still surviving. See, we still got our oceans. But you could, you know, you could actually make the sun into a red giant. And as it swells up, you'll actually see the oceans dry up. Oh, it's just beautiful. You know, one thing we do have to try. The one thing I got it to do. Only um, one? In Universe Sandbox 1, the original one, yeah. is I was able to fling a massive water world at Jupiter and make it ignite into a star. Mm. Now, let's see if they fix that nice um, nice uh, physics. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was a massive water plant. I mean, it was huge. But well, it did ignite. I can. I mean, I, earlier today I made stars uh, from you know, asteroids that had you know, hydrogen gas uh, accumulating on them. And I just kept throwing well, hydrogen at them. with Jupiter. All right. You want to go with Jupiter? We can go with Jupiter. Yeah. Let's okay. fling a water world to Jupiter. Okay. Let's go to Jupiter. Shall we? Let's do it. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's do. Um, let's see if we got just Jupiter in here. By the way, as soon as uh, we are able, I'm pretty sure Paul is ready to get a good look at that nice planet of Jupiter once the weather settles down a little bit. I mean tonight? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm pretty sure he's probably like me, getting itchy to freaking do something because, man, that weather, just East Coast weather has been absolutely atrocious the last three weeks. It has. I'm actually uh, going to set up here in a few minutes and get cool. a quick in. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And I will broadcast that on the PNK channel as well, and I'll have Mark in a little box there for you all. So right. uh, if you're watching yeah, on PNK, it, you'll see the moon stream on there. It is looking real good outside right now. Oh, nice. Then we have to. We got to take advantage of it. All righty. Then we can all cut over to this and, and leave this one behind. But I know your internet is, is not the best, Paul, so um, we would understand if you have to hang up in order to stream it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to set up for now and, and let Jupiter get closer. Uh, okay. Well, while you wait, think of something we can smash into something else. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> we should have the next request because yeah. you're too quiet. Absolutely. Just don't kill Jupiter till I can get it in the scope. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. Well, then here we are. We're at Jupiter now, and uh, here we go. Okay, so now we're at Jupiter again. Now and... Jupiter doesn't have any moons. Can we give it one? How about this? Why don't we give it all its moons? Add moons to the planet. And watch the lines of form. Yeah, there's... Well, actually, I didn't even uh, put those in, did I? Uh, oh, good. Now, what would happen... Wow. Yeah, see all what would happen if Mercury and Venus did have moons and it was still circling the sun? You know, we can simulate all that. Normal. But we can simulate all that. Destroyed? No, we can, we can simulate all that. We, that's what I'm saying. We can just simulate it. I know, but... I want Paul to have a turn, and then I just jumped oh. right in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, Ladies it's just, gentlemen. you'll, Mark will say, like, a paragraph, and I have, like, ten questions for every sentence, <laughs> and then he won't say anything, it's like, I'm just, I'm overwhelmed, it's like, I want to know everything, I don't even know what to ask first, I really don't. Oh, that's the way it goes, yeah. though. That's the way it goes. So, the sometimes these thoughts seem disjointed, but... I may have been thinking about this for like weeks, yeah. and then something comes up and reminds me. So, and sorry, I get it. I get loud. That's okay. Let's let's do a let's do uh, a water world in, uh, four times four times the size of Jupiter. <laughs> Throw it at it. All right, hold on. Let me. Uh... Hey. Okay, now we have Jupiter. So now, these are the moons of Jupiter, and I got to turn on the trails, so now we can see the trails. There we go. Now, and there is Jupiter moving now, through space and time. What, what I want to point out, though, four? what I want to point out, though, is that what you're looking at. Because when you're looking at uh, the moons and the way they're orbiting, you're saying, wait a minute, that doesn't look right. They're supposed to be round orbits. They would be round orbits 
if Jupiter wasn't moving through space. These are the absolute trails made by the planets. Okay. So that's why they're doing what they're doing. All right. Yeah. Now, that's something that if you look at it right from the top, okay, Io is going around Jupiter just like you expect it to. See right there, there's Io. It's going around Jupiter. <laughs> uh, and it's making a perfectly circular path around Jupiter. It's just that these corkscrew paths are what are the absolute paths left behind. Mark, I forgot to tell you a story about today. I emailed the makers of this game uh -huh. <laughs> today because oh, because of the conversation we had last night. And they said don't. And I asked them. I asked them to put a flat Earth in, just so we can experiment. <laughs> And, you know, I just went into detail. I was like, listen, you know, we have a lot of things we would like to experiment with just to show people how impossible it, it is. And they told and, me there's no um, physics he, that can support that. He, he, yeah, he emailed me back. <laughs> it was it was basically he said a nice paragraph and he said um, in the bottom <laughs> in the bottom sentence before he like let go of the of the email. He was like, but if anybody asks why we don't have a flat earth or why we won't do one, just tell them it's retarded. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, that's from a game developer. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, I just, oh man, I should actually, I didn't, I was thinking about like screen capturing it. And I was like, but well, maybe I won't just because it was a private email between two people. But I was like, geez, Louise. That's great. But I thought that was to be cool, like to have just to experiment, just to show people how impossible, like it'd be cool if like you put a flat earth on there and like as soon as you put it anywhere, it just claps into a ball. Yeah. <laughs> you know what actually, I mean? that's the thing though. See, because this uses real physics to work. Um, yeah. You can actually show a craggy old asteroid, and as you add mass to it, because you can add mass and create a yeah. planet from a, just a craggy asteroid, as you keep slamming things into it, you'll watch yep. it change shape, and there's a certain point at which it goes spherical, and that's because of the, of the nature of how, this, how the uh, accretion process works. Paul, so, have you ever used this um, at all, or got a chance to play around in Universe Sandbox? Have you ever tried it or, or anything like that? Have you ever played in a sandbox? <laughs> have you ever played in the universe sandbox i should say and nope still paul's, setting up paul's not here oh no i'm here i'm sorry <laughs> okay <laughs> the man is always working that's okay he's got these in his mind he's thinking i'm gonna set up this telescope if it, if it yeah. kills me we'll take that as a no what'd you say what'd you say keith i was we, i was asking if you ever got to play around in universe sandbox at all or ever seen it no no oh. i've never seen it before it's pretty awesome it is yeah, yeah it's, very, it's awesome it uses the actual physics, you know, and, and and that's what's really cool about it. And I think it's really cheap on Steam. Like you can, uh, um, what was it? A Universe Sandbox Two, I think, it just it's on sale for like fourteen bucks or something like that. And once again, if anybody wants it, definitely go out and grab it. It's a really fun tool to have. Yeah. And you know, once again, we're not promoted by Universe Sandbox or anything like that. We just, you know, just. I know I can speak for myself anyway. I really appreciate the game and the real physics and, and the math that goes into making this happen. Right. So and definitely go and check it out if you get a chance. It's free as, or it's on Steam for anybody to anybody to have. As long as you use it uh, at a reasonable rate, as it, you know, in terms of time, then it'll stay very accurate. Uh, as soon as you start to accelerate, it starts to make take shortcuts. Yeah. Because you're asking it to and, do four million calculations and only. You know, yeah. a fourteenth of a second as opposed you to do, four million calculations you want to use in it. about a yeah. you know, twelfth of a second or something. Well, that's what I was going to say. You do want to use it on a computer that has very good processing power because it does use a lot of computer uh, when you're running it. Yeah. So, because it is doing all those calculations. Yeah. Now, see, and is it is it worth it for each planet? Okay, like here's Jupiter. Like I said, uh, we have this overview, so you can see all these things. And uh, I'll show you something else. Now, um, when we're looking at the planet you go down here and you see all these little parameters it tells you the surface temperature at the top of the clouds it's minus 155 c okay the radius is this that's those are accurate the density uh the uh the motion is correct it shows you all the uh basically all the parameters of the orbit uh amongst you know parameters you've never even heard of like the mean and true anomalies uh and then there's composition, which shows you the interior uh, structure. And you can see there's, it gives you the, the uh, little indicators of how much iron, how much silicate structure, and how much water is within there, and how much hydrogen. You'll see that Jupiter is 98% hydrogen. It really is. Now, uh, also, uh, in, that, in that whole thing, you can, you can actually, you can actually uh, calculate... Uh, and show the magnetic fields. For instance, let's look at Jupiter's magnetic field, right? It's massive. Okay, this is the magnetosphere of Jupiter. 
Now, why does it look like a teardrop? Because the sun's solar wind, way out there, there's the sun. The sun is actually uh, streaming high energy particles over Jupiter. And you'll notice that way out here at the front end of the magnetosphere, these particles hit, the particles from the sun hit here. And they never get to here. They never get to Jupiter. Right? Jupiter's magnetic field prevents the sun's very powerful um, radiation from actually reaching it. So it stopped way out here. And it goes around Jupiter and leaves this little teardrop behind it. Okay, so that's the magnetosphere of Jupiter. That's the magnetic field. Um, and it's a, a very powerful magnetic field. And, um, you know, we can look in, if we looked in, for instance, at the uh, uh, magnetic, let's see, turn on the magnetosphere again. Okay, and let's see here. Can I see the magnetic axis? Or is that down on the planet? Got to get closer, maybe. Well, it doesn't matter. Okay, the bottom line is that the magnetic field is what you know keeps us on our planet from having the ultraviolet rays from the sun hit us but it doesn't protect anything on jupiter in fact jupiter uh with the metallic hydrogen core jupiter uh, produces a lot of radiation that gets trapped in its magnetosphere so long before you actually reach jupiter in your spaceship you're going to be fried by the radiation trapped in its magnetosphere because look look how far away it is here and then look at this, okay, when we turn on the magnetosphere, okay, we are within it at this point. And let's smash it. What, the magnetosphere? No, Jupiter. Okay. I don't like the way it's looking at me. You know what? It's looking kind of, <laughs> give me that little look through its eye. You know, I'm, it's pissing me off. So, you know what? <laughs> let's wipe it out. Let's wipe it out. And here's what we're going to do we're going to find another Jupiter. Uh, no, let's throw Saturn at it. What do you want? Shall we throw right. Saturn at it? Sure, why not? Okay, let's throw Saturn at it. We're going to throw Saturn at Jupiter. Here we go. We're going to say um, bye bye. Yes? Ted, Ted wants to know Does Jupiter radiate anything at all except the magnetosphere? <clears throat> yeah, gamma, no, gamma. It does. Actually, Jupiter uh, has a uh, infrared output, it, pu it puts out some heat. Um, and um, the magnetosphere has trapped solar energy particles in it. So that's why the, the magnetosphere is uh, uh, charged up in there and, and has the, this uh, high radiation content because it's a massive magnetic field. I think it's like 20 times ours. Um, but uh, let's, let's, I'm going to fling Saturn now, and I'm just going to make sure that uh, 20 minutes per second, maybe that'll work. Yeah, okay, good. That's, that's reasonable. Now we're just pl flinging the planet Saturn. We're not doing anything special. <laughs> okay, and now we're gonna see what happens here. That's no moon. That's a space station. Oh yes, here we go. And now Jupiter's going. Wait, wait. What did I do? What did I do? Oh, and, this is gonna be mash of the titans. And I gotta back off because I don't want this to do this to me. Oh, for bam. Yeah, but look what happened. Watch the moons, people. Watch the moons. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah. Utter chaos. Yep. It is definitely chaos. <laughs> and I bet you if you were to back out, it would have an effect on the entire solar system. Well, it... Eventually. It may. But look at this. Well, we just almost lost our great protector, but Jupiter stands and Saturn is gone. Well... Now we have stupider. <laughs> or jattern. <laughs> jattern or stupider. <laughs> I like stupider better. That's funny. <laughs> but look at it. It's crossing. It's going. It's Europa still hung around for Actually, a little bit. Ganymede. Yeah, but I think what we want to do is accelerate and look at the time to see if anything stabilizes out of all this. Okay. I'll do the play by play. And as you can as see, Jupiter rides through, we're watching you Europa. Now, Europa. Jupiter has been accelerated and it's been accelerated in a, the direction from which Saturn hit it. And it's and heating it's, up. It's left the moons behind. It said bye bye. It said bye bye. That's right. Yeah. And as we have a little creeper that's deciding to stay around Jupiter yeah, as a that? hot mass traveling through space and time. Let's pause this and go check that out. Oh, that's Metis. Look at that. We have found Metis. The one little clinger to now, our new stupider planet. Right. Now, if we look at the mass here, okay, the mass now of this planet, uh, let's go back to overview. 
the mass of the planet now if we look at it in terms of mass of jupiter all right um it looks like it's the mass is down to 0 0.2 times that of Jupiter but that doesn't seem to make sense does it because we took Saturn and collided it with it but what happened was a lot of volatiles were, were uh, uh, just burned off and destroyed when but make no mistake it occurred. is glowing but it is not a Sun it doesn't it is look, not a Sun no it doesn't look like a snake slithering yes it's very creepy it is very creepy yeah it's but like, and you're going to leave me behind? No, you're not. I'm coming yeah, back up around the other right. side. That's it. And meanwhile, this this scenario played out in our Wow. Services. Look at that. Look at all the stuff left behind. Remember the uh, remember all the uh, ships coming to Earth in the battle in Mass Effect 3? That's what that kind of looks oh, that's like. That's right. And, and now anyone who's played Mass Effect 3 knows what you're talking about. Those who didn't say, what's he talking about? Wow, look at that. We got Europa and Ganymede still hanging out in the back. And we have, that's wow. Yeah, just, true. I'm trying to find one of the bigger, I'm trying to find where all the uh, Galilean moons are. Well, Ganymede with, and Europa are here. Okay, yeah, we have those two. Now, where are the other two? We need Callisto. Did they get destroyed? Are they out? Are they, are they? I'm not sure. Wait, 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 Saturn's there too. Go Saturn? back over to the right. Saturn? Saturn is right there. Where is Saturn? Go to it. To the right, to the right, to the right. To the right, to the right. Up, so up, 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 right. up. Oh, there it is. There it is. Let's see what it looks like. Saturn survived a collision. No, it didn't actually survive a collision. With the protector of the inner planets. It didn't survive. Mark, don't, don't destroy my dreams right now, okay? It's just, this, it's this, there. Yeah, well, it's there, but it didn't come out of it. It's not like it came, <laughs> went through... Uh, I'm not sure how this. See, this this could be a syntax thing based on the labeling. <laughs> actually, okay. Well, yeah. maybe my play by play was wrong, but I saw Saturn I'm gonna and just taking it. it. I'm gonna send Venus into it. So okay. that'll end your. Maybe it's a black hole. I just sent Venus into it, so that ends your trip real fast. It's a black hole. There. It oh, goes. look, it's glowing. I know, because I sent Venus into it, and the friction. So it did impact. survive. Well, I don't know. Anyway, um. I am going to, let's see, what do we got over here? Well, before we get too far from Jupiter, oh, yes. uh, Ronald wants to know what kind of storm. Ronald who? I'm just kidding. Look at this. Look at it. This is what's, just left. This is what's left in the Jupiter system. Would you look at it? That's crazy, isn't it? All these little planets. Look at There's Europa. And how fast did you throw Saturn into it? Um... I don't know what the default uh, speed is. It oh, okay. might, might have been 10 kilometers per second. But Europa's still hanging around. Europa's Just uh, 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 moons without a home. I wonder where they will go in time. Where they will find their way to. Well, shall we look? Shall Let's we go? look. Shall Let's find out. That's why we do this. Everybody in the chat, we're going to find out what happens to all this debris. Will it make another moon around another planet? We or don't know. Will they collide with each other? Yes, you never know. Yeah. Will their mutual gravity uh, cause them to uh, coalesce? Are you at the? Uh, are you at the? I would pro you probably have to take the speed up a bunch. Well, here's the thing. See <laughs> down here. You see yeah, this but, red, but as much as you can, I should say. This red thing here. Yeah. Uh, this basically gives us the maximum time step. Uh, That's weird because you know what? I have never had that happen. Well, I All can't. Mine. I can get to like. I wonder if it's maybe something new they added to an update or something. Probably. Because yeah. it was just dragging people's machines to a halt. Yeah, understandable. I mean, it probably just all the calculations that have to be done to do it, yeah. like, you know, 10 years a second. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Now, if I come farther away, um, I wonder. See, now that the, we should be able to get to a little higher than that. Let's see. see yeah. We can go to almost 18. We have to go even farther away. Uh, and now, see, it's dull again, and we can actually probably go to maybe 20 or so. No, it doesn't want to let us. No. 18 is the limit. Okay. So we've had a, sil a solar system that was com you know, disrupted fairly. Look at, that. Look at that. That's just like. That would be so visible in our night sky. Oh, well, yeah, it would. I mean, those aren't visible trails. Those are. This is what you'd see. Okay. Yeah. You know, this is just trails that we had. I'm saying the, the initial impact and, and oh, afterwards yes. we have a oh, indeed. massive light in the sky. Oh, yeah. 
Actually, let's go to the earth and see if anything. Uh, Did you ever answer um, Ron's question? Ron's? No, I haven't answered that yet. Oh, okay. Uh, and I'm going to ask Amanda to ask me again because I didn't hear it. Uh, I mean, I heard it, but I, I, I was in the middle of a thought. What? Sorry, sorry. Oh, I didn't that's, realize. That's my I, fault. I thought you were going far away. And I'm trying to keep topical. And other questions are coming in. I'm, I'm trying, oh, guys. Let me ask. Let me answer Ronald's because he did ask a question. I didn't answer it. What, what did he ask again? He wants to know about the what kind of storm that red spot on Jupiter is. Well, a that's big the thing. one. We, we don't. Yeah, well, that's true. We don't. We don't know uh, what type of storm it is per se. Uh, it's not like we can say what it is. We don't know what it's from because we don't really understand. Well, we have an idea what drives like Saturn out there. Hey, look at me. Uh, we understand what drives uh, Jupiter to some extent, but we don't understand what drives these large storms. For instance, there's white ovals also on Jupiter, and those are also storms. But we don't know uh, the exact weather mechanisms which drive those. There's a whole nother, whole nother thing. I, um, I thought it was like the eye of like a hurricane or something. Well, no, that's all true, but we don't know what causes it. I think that's, I oh. thought his question was asking what causes them or. Well, he's wanted to know what kind of storm it is. So yeah. I guess, yeah. Oh, well, what kind he of storm? Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cyclonic storm of some kind, but there's one, there's one uh, set of footage you can look at, which are photos actually, which shows the red spot from above, very close from one of the uh, Juno mission probe uh, photos. You can see it spiral down into Jupiter. So the reason it's darker is because you're seeing down into the deeper recesses of the planet. So it's not just like a cloud that you're seeing at the top of Jupiter's atmosphere. You're actually looking down into Jupiter's atmosphere because it's in 3D, you won't forget. It's really cool. I'm gonna just do a new one here, by the way, and there's a reason. All right, here we are. And now we okay, Thank you, add... I hope that helps Ronald. What? No, I was saying thank you, and oh. I hope that helps Ronald. Okay. This is a main sequence dwarf. This is an M star. Okay. And it's a star that if we look at it and we grab its properties and we look at its size in terms of the size of the sun, all right, it's only 0. 0.44 times the size of the sun. It's less than half the size of the sun. So what would happen if uh, the uh, what would happen if the sun actually struck it? Shall we find out? Let's do it. Okay, we're gonna do it. So we're gonna launch the sun at that red dwarf, and this is 1.3 hours per second. We'll have to increase. So there we go. Um, now we have these two stars heading toward each other. Let's watch what happens. We shall now increase the time. It's still your turn. It goes exponentially very quickly, so hold on. What the hell did it stop? I know, eh? It's oh, like it's the duh. I got the. Look at. Look, hello. Simulation's paused. Okay. My mistake. I apologize. It's all me wrong. I'm sorry. It's me. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. You we were just building the anticipation. Yeah, it's so much so that I screwed up. Okay, so now I'm going to say go. Boom! What the hell was that? Well, let's back out to see what just happened. Whoa, this is called a supernova. Now, Kaboom. Here's, here's, here's what's interesting, folks, about this thing. You see this? Now, we're not traveling. It's coming toward us because a supernova is blowing outward. So the supernova occurred inside. But you see all this material in here? You're not going to believe this, but this is material that we can actually use to build new star systems and planets actually in Universe Sandbox. You can use this. This is all hydrogen gas. Okay, and it's all very, you know, see supernova remnant. It tells us what, what's in here. Okay, this stuff, it gives you the mass, tells you where it's from. And this is all the star stuff. The elements and so forth and we can actually now build another star from this uh and it's just crazy what we can do and i just absolutely love it so if we put an object in there that had some gravity 
it would start pulling all these little supernova remnant uh, gases and, and particles into it. And it would actually create uh, a brand new star. So, but if you accelerate now, you'll see that it's expanding outward until finally uh, there's nothing left behind. And you'll see it go dark in just a couple seconds. And uh, now, if you notice, the material is still here. All right, if we actually, uh, if I just drop down the time here, not that we have to, but if we just drop it down like right now, let's just drop it down to something reasonable. Here we go. Okay, so, uh, and all around us now is supernova remnant stuff. It's all here. In other words, all the material created in the star is around us, and we can actually create stuff from it. And this is very cool. Now, let's take the sun, for instance, uh, and we'll stick it out. Okay, I launched the sun. I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Um, so <laughs> you just <laughs> killed a civilization. <laughs> I just launched Way the sun. far away. Yeah, I launched the sun. That was a little bit bad. Okay. And is, now, Paul, is Paul still here? I think he dropped out. He dropped out. Okay, I was just wondering because I actually uh, have the stream ready to go on this end. All right. So, maybe not. Paul, if you're still listening, the stream's ready to go on this end. So. Well, maybe he's still there. Yeah, you never know. Okay, so now, um, here's something. We can actually uh, create a binary star system. And there it is. Where'd it go? But can we smash it? Oh, yeah, we can smash it. <laughs> yeah, we can smash it. Yeah, we actually uh, got too close there. So, uh, let me... Actually, let me do something real quick, Mark. Yeah, ahead, Anybody yeah. that's watching on uh, P and K Space Imaging right now, if you want to continue to watch this playful session on Universe Sandbox, please jump over to Mark D'Antonio's channel. I will post a link in the chat. The P and K stream will be shortly switching over to the live moon, um, since we will have it for a little bit. And uh, so, anybody wants to see that, they can hang out there. If you want to keep on checking in with the uh, Universe Sandbox session over here on Mark's channel. Jump on over. The link will be in the chat. And uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Thanks. Right. There you go. Very good. All right. Continue, sir. Sure enough. So I'm actually, I'm just gonna. I, I think I'm just gonna hang out on mic with you guys, even while we're streaming the moon. Okay. You know, I'll be kind of clicking back and forth, but you know, I still find it interesting. Let me post your link in our chat one more time. Okay. So people have it for them to continue watching us playing in the sandbox of the universe with total destruction going on. Absolutely right. I'm going to pull out of here for a minute and I'm going to throw in Proxima, kind of an approximately where it belongs. A quadruple star system. Triple. No, doesn't need to be quadruple, but... Let's, let's see, put, I let's was, I was, let's see what? if I got it. <laughs> What'd you say? I was going to ask if we could see something, but I can't remember what it's called. I can't remember where it is. But it's some something's Trojan. I would guess. And I there's just did this three, wrong. three stars that go all yeah, in a row. Different. Yeah. Um. I'm not sure. I think. Uh, the the. Uh, the Trojan things are the asteroids. We have the Trojan asteroids, which, uh, uh, and the Apollo asteroids. Uh, so, is it that? <laughs> Sounds like Keith is drumming. No, I'm typing. Yeah. Because I can't do anything else because of stupid arm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have to arm. <laughs> okay. Huh? I, I asked Keith what happened to his arm, and he left. And I asked him if it was in a cast. No, it's a microphone arm. Yeah, the mic arm, not the. Uh... And I, the way I have to have this set up, I have the laptop that's actually viewing the two streams on YouTube. Um, it's actually it has to be connected to that table. So anytime I type, you'll hear that. Which is crappy. Yeah, that's not a problem. I was trying to just generate the uh, Alpha Centauri system, but I, I mean, it's already generated. Let's see that. 
Boom. <laughs> and, and goodbye. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, just uh, killed all of us. Well, the problem was I couldn't get the third third star to orbit properly. I'm just having fun. <laughs> I actually what would happen if we put like 10 stars in one area? Like far enough away at first, but just put like 10 stars in one general blank canvas. Well, let's find out, shall we? But sure. first of all, let me uh, let me look at some other fun collisions. Um, um, let's see, Sun and the Earth, Wolf three fifty nine and the Earth, Jupiter and the Earth, uh, Mars and the Earth, um, Moon and Mimas, Mimas, you know the uh, the Moon there, Saturn. Earth and Moon, Earth Moon, slow motion. Here we go. Oh, so many questions I have. Can you? I uh, I think it was when you moved the Moon's orbit closer to Earth, and it all broke apart. Yes, that was the rotation. And I think yeah. Keith was saying something about would it make a new Moon? Can you do that here? Can you like, if you sped it up, would all those little portions? I don't know. I don't even know how to ask because I have so many questions. Like, would they accrete and cause a new become a new moon? Yeah, like what's? I don't think that what they, what uh, makes it that some would just like crash into ex each other and explode, and some would like clump together and, you know, yeah, size, it, it's I guess. circumstances actually. The the circumstances uh, of the uh, you know, of the uh, motion, you know. Uh, Pretty much. So, let's see. So we were talking about it a few weeks ago on Sky Tour Radio, plug plug, yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know how the planets were formed, how the sun was formed, how the moon was formed, and I'm just wondering, can we actually watch it on this program? Yeah, like, I'm not. I'd, I'd have to research that to do it right, um, but I can try. Um, you know, at, at after that point, but uh, just a thought. No, no, it's a good thought. I like it. Remember, folks, Sky Tour Radio, 9 p.m. Eastern Time on KGRARadio.com. And we've actually, we, when in looking at the uh, ratings of Sky Tour Radio, I've been kind of astonished at uh, how how well it's been doing, and very humbled too, because it means that people are actually, uh, you know, listening to our our broadcast. Uh, and I'm very very pleased because you know these are nationwide ratings, actually worldwide ratings. Um, and um, if you look at our, our ratings on what's called TalkStreamLive.com, um, for our time slot, which is 9 to 10 on Sunday nights, our, our rank has never really uh, had, has never been uh, higher than 4. It's always been uh, 2 or 3 or 4, and mostly 3 on average. Isn't that correct? That is correct, yes. So that's, that's, that's pretty good, and it's all because of you, Amanda. <laughs> I doubt that, uh, but thank you. Don't, um, don't, deny, people... don't doubt that, Amanda. You know, you're, you actually have some really intelligent things to say, and you ask questions that other people are actually thinking out there. I know it. Oh, I hope no one has the kind of crazy thoughts I have, but um, <laughs> people <laughs> need this. Whether it or not, either they want it or they hear it and they don't realize how much they needed it until they heard it, you know, like, yeah, well, kind of things matter and they, you know, yeah, you know, like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, it's the building blocks of everything. It's all yeah. around us. And I don't want to get too deep and philosophical. Well, you're allowed to. But you know what I mean, like, I don't know. Well, well, you can really dream crazy things in this kind of universe and yeah. you can actually think of how to make it happen. Yeah. Well, sorry, we were talking about consciousness last night on the show and... Oh yeah, we had, a, we had a very interesting talk last night on the show because <clears throat> my big thing was, you know, the life on this planet seems to have followed an evolutionary pathways that make the existing life very special and very able to survive within its niche for its evolutionary adaptations that's, that's undertaken 
And I use the octopus as, a, as an example. The octopus is probably one of my favorite animals, although it frightens me to death. I, the, the octopus, if one wrapped around my leg, I'd probably scream like a little girl. Ah, you know, I'm just waiting for that parrot-like beak to start gnawing at my ankle bone or something. But uh, the octopus is very intelligent. And, and I, I think the studies show it to be perhaps, and some oceanographers and scientists agree, it's the, it's the smartest animal in the ocean, right, Amanda? Yeah. You know? Um, by the way, I'm going to do a 14 seconds per second just to see if, if series, uh, hitting series will do anything to, for uh, interesting. So it's just these series two. Series hitting series? Series hitting itself, yeah. So what would happen? Let's find out. And I'm going to stay far away because I don't want any of these video artifacts happening. I'm going to figure out what's causing that because I used to be able to be right up close, right in the middle of this and then watch it happening and didn't have any problems with it. With this very computer, so I'm not sure what's going on. But here we go. I think the one moving is gonna oh. make it better. Oh, oh, look at that! And this is slower, or I'm sorry, faster than real time. And then, of course, series explodes into these Wait, many fragments. Look at that! That's just beautiful in a sense. Frightening and beautiful all at the same time, don't you think? Now it's going to merge. Going to merge together. Yeah. Well, see what happens is, uh, what what will happen is the the uh, uh, the planet will actually have a uh, uh, tendency to just become molten again, and that's what we're seeing. And by going molten again, uh, the planet will then form a larger round planet. I mean, the dwarf planet rather. And then you see these things. Your flying. sound's freaking out a little. Huh? What? What did you say? Uh oh. Why? Ah, uh, your sound is really broken. Um. Well, let's make sure that it's not just at your end. Uh, is Keith still here? Uh -oh. I, I see him. You see him no, here. it's still it's 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 on your end, Mark, because I can hear Amanda just fine. And I'm breaking up. You're breaking up, and the screen was freezing. So I'm thinking oh. your computer is having a tough time running Skype and you know simulation. I see. At certain points. Maybe at certain was, points. Maybe that collision was a little bit bad. It's possible. Yeah. That's All what right. happens when you smash series into series. I guess so. Well, here's what I can do. Uh, let me just uh, go back and say new. And see if the problem is gone. So is the problem gone now? You can hear me. Yeah. Now? Yeah. yeah. Uh, coming through pretty good. All right. So it must have been uh, my attempt to smash series into series. Yeah. That's too bad. I like smashing series into series. No, other other people are saying they could hear you. I don't know. Huh. That's strange. Well, no worries. Weird. Well, it seems, it seems like it resolved now. Okay. Yep. Keep on. Sorry. All right. No worries. So, um, I was talking about <clears throat> from last night's show when we talked about the uh, the octopus was a, as an intelligent animal. Uh, I was just just very impressed with the octopus, um, and so uh, I think that people will generally think that the octopus is a, um, a highly evolved animal as well and science does too so it's pretty cool all right in this simulation the earth crashes directly into and is swallowed by a black hole uh, that's the mass of the sun okay shall we see that and it says one minute per second that's probably gonna go fast so let's do this let's drop it down and see what we get we can always increase it in speed and don't, don't forget we can't see the black hole <laughs> But the Earth is heading toward it, that's for sure. Hmm. Oh, wait a minute. You can look for the black hole. You can actually see the way it warps the stars. Okay, so... Uh-oh. You hear all that noise? Look at this. The Earth is actually being broken apart. Uh-oh. Well, that's it. It's gone. Well, that wasn't very exciting, was it? Thanos. It wasn't very exciting. Yeah. Well, it just was not too too exciting, I guess. But, you know, we'll, we'll try that. 
Uh, black hole in the moon. Well, let's try to black hole in the moon. Is that any different? Probably not. <laughs> Okay, what is the biggest moon out there? Ganymede? No. Titan? I think our moon is the largest moon, isn't it? No, oh, you mean as far as the... Uh, uh, In our solar system. Oh. Um, I'd have to look at Titan's diameter, compare it to Ganymede. Because I think Ganymede edges out Titan by a little bit. But I could be uh, incorrect. Uh, but I do believe that Ganymede is the largest moon in our solar system. That's okay, my Okay, those are my first two guesses. That's not too bad. Not at all. And and it comes from, you know, having been exposed to this. You know now, you know? That's the thing. If I can pick up a little bit each time, yeah. then, yeah. And just not forget it. I can't take in new information and forget the old stuff, right? So. No, you can't. And you won't. Um. But, okay, but is, I just, have just a so you know, I mean... I'm almost certain it's Ganymede, actually. is the largest moon in the solar system. And, and you know, uh, I think that Titan is probably next in size. Um, so, they're, you know, they're, there's, Ganymede and Titan are very close in size, okay? But uh, I believe Titan is a little bit smaller than Ganymede. So. Unless Paul's still around and he has a request. I have a request. Okay. Okay, I hear nothing, so I'm going to go. Yeah, I don't think he is. I think he's getting ready for the stream. Okay. okay. No yeah, see, he sees clear sky, and then he's like, ah, clear sky. <laughs> oh, I don't blame him. I don't either. I don't, I'll probably go outside um, and see it's clear here, too. Okay, I want to see Titan. Okay. No, Ganymede, sorry. All right. You want to see that, huh? I want to see Ganymede. Okay, so to see Ganymede, we have to first bring up Jupiter. So that we can see Ganymede. So what we're going to do is we're going to look. But at I want to launch something at it. So okay, well you're we going to have to take everything else out. Well then, let's find a. There's one of these that actually has just Jupiter in it, uh, and I think and like they have we have the Saturn system, okay, and I know we have the Jupiter system down here somewhere. Uh, just Jupiter. Yeah, so I'm trying to find out. <laughs> and this is a free program, right? No. This is a program. It's, it's a paid program. You have to pay to use it? No, you, it's, a, it's a single download. It's like 14 bucks on Steam if anybody has Steam for yeah. like gaming or anything. Uh, you can get it and download it. There's no free version. Uh, someone else, Matty, was asking. Uh, he can't get it on his iPad. No, because it's, it's, a, it's a PC-based program. It might there might be a Mac counterpart, but they're not. I don't think it's written for iPad. It's way too computer intensive for. Uh, yeah, if you go to uh, Universe Sandbox um, website, I'm not sure exactly what. It might be UniverseSandbox.com. I'm not sure, but go in there and look, and they'll give you all the options and tell you what kind of processing speed you need and whatnot in order to uh, for it to work properly. Right. Thank you, Keith. So everything you see here is Jupiter and its moons. Check it out. Way in the middle of all that is Jupiter. Isn't that crazy? That's very crazy. And of course, here's Europa. Here's Io. All right. And I believe if we swing around, we've got Ganymede there. Okay. And Callisto is right there. So there are the four Galilean satellites right here Callisto, Europa. Io and Ganymede. And you want to see Ganymede. So let's go zoom in into Ganymede. Okay, here we are. This is Ganymede. That's actually what it looks like. That's the real Ganymede. And what did you want to smash into it? Well, first of all, let me uh, uh let me drop the time down to something more reasonable. Okay, six seconds per eight seven seconds per second. That'll be good. What do you want to smash into it? Um, and because I was alluding to it earlier, and then 
my friend Ben showed up in chat and had the same idea, so... Okay. Um, uh, the Death Star, please? Oh. Uh, I don't know. We can do the Death Star. I'm sure I saw it in here before, because I remember thinking how funny it was. Really? Yeah. All right, well, let's go to the Objects, then, the Objects tab. And let's see if... Yeah, I mean, you have billiard there. balls and soccer balls and stuff, Yeah, but stuff, those are the actual so. size of a billiard ball. No, that's not huge. We have the New Horizon spacecraft. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I don't see it. We have the Tesla Roadster. Look at that. Talk about, talk about uh, uh, you know, being updated, right? Ooh. I want to send that by Pluto or something. <laughs> Remember, it's the actual size of the object, so it's, you know. Now, if we sent it, if we sent it from Earth and sped it up, would we actually see the car, like, discoloring and breaking down and stuff? No, I don't think they handle the, uh, the radiation. I don't think they do. Like, we could throw jack-o'-lanterns and so forth. Uh, we can sh shoot the New Horizons, uh... We could throw a phantom zone from, well, then we can throw third stage. Why now? Why, why would they say third stage of Saturn V? Why would that be something that you could throw at the moon you know, or any? Other I thing? don't know, but seeing that, I'm sure there's got to be a Death Star in here. Yeah. Now. I'm going to interject real quick and just let you know, Mark. I'm going to dip out of this call just so we can stream over there. I'm going to try to save some bandwidth. That way, I'm not running Skype when I do it. So, uh, okay, guys, have fun. Uh, we'll be over streaming the moon and Jupiter. Alrighty. Have fun, guys. Ten and four. Smash some stuff. We'll get there. <laughs> All right, guys. Have nice a good night. Ya. Yep. They show the third stage because um, the third stage uh, of the Saturn V was the one that held the lunar module. And after they extracted the lunar module, they'd crash it into the lunar surface and it would actually uh, make a crater. And that crater would set off seismometers left by other missions. And uh, they would actually be able to test their, their geological model of the moon uh, by those crashes. And uh, it, it, it was very interesting. And you can actually see on the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter website, which will be another clear, I'm sorry, another cloudy night stream that we do. You'll actually be able to see the, um, the third stage crash sites. And I'll be, I'll, ha I'll be happy to show them to you. I will be happy to show them to you. But here, you know what we're going to do? Let's do this. Let's just for fun. Let's take this Tesla Roadster and stick it in orbit around Ganymede. All right. So now the Tesla Roadster is in orbit around Ganymede. There it is. And let's just go grab it. And let's see if we can zoom in on it. Oh, first, I got to select it and get there. All right, here we go. All right. Let's get closer now. Hey, there we go. Is Starman in there or not? Oh, did somebody steal Starman? It's funny, I I would have assumed if they were putting it in, they may as well put it in. Except it looks like it's not even the convertible. The top isn't down. What the heck? Why they did that? Come on, they wimped out. Okay, that's okay. Um, but there they go, you know. And by the way, this is actually uh, an active simulation. It's actually running. See, so when we increase the speed a little. You'll see that it's uh, orbiting. <laughs> I right. see something blue in the objects on the left, and they're calling it a police box. Do you think that's uh That's the TARDIS. Copyright thing? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, but it's distinctly called a police box, but I was thinking TARDIS as soon as I oh, saw Oh, but you know what? You're right. They couldn't say the words TARDIS. You know, probably. But we can, and we mm -hmm. do. Wait, where'd it go? Did I miss it? I think I missed it. I meant to put it into orbit and I didn't. All right, let's go back out here. There it is. So, no Death Star? No, there's no Death Star in here, unfortunately. It's crazy. I Look was this. sure I saw one. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is funny. This is crazy enough, isn't it? Yeah. 
what if what we did was was you know actually created these objects around these moons and we're just playing around here and thinking how funny it is and yet we're actually creating them that would really be funny well i was thinking um when you just enveloped earth in that black hole yeah it would be cool if all of a sudden like mm -hmm. i don't know something changed like what do you mean like just everything we were looking at suddenly like changed colors or oh. <laughs> all the planets were square and all the moons were triangle and like going into singularity and starting an alternate well, that's, universe. That's pretty cool. I didn't even think about that. No, just it would have been cool like at the last moment we saw the earth and the black hole totally covered it like have the whole program change. Yeah. But people, I guess they'd get too many complaints. They'd be like, oh. No. Yeah. Just be a joke. No. I get it. Even even if it happened for like 10 seconds and then like by default just went back to wherever you left off before you enveloped it with the black hole. Mm -hmm. That's what I'd do if I was a programmer. That'd be fun. It would be. That would really be fun. Okay. Anyway, then. speaking of triangles, Ted wants you to hit uh, Phobos with a pyramid. Oh, yeah? Okay. So let's go back then. And let's create a new simulation with nothing in it. And our solar system just vanishes. Ah! Poof. And let's add Phobos in here. And to add Phobos... And we do this, I believe, moons and Phobos. Okay, so here's Phobos. And what do you want me to hit with it? A pyramid. A pyramid. Well, a pyramid, uh, we don't have a pyramid per se. Oh, here we do. We have a great pyramid of Giza. He's right. Okay. So, we want to launch it at it? Yes, please. Okay. I think we can do I, that. I think, well, I could be wrong. I don't want to speak on behalf of chat if I'm wrong, but I, I want to say I think people are enjoying the launching more than the orbiting. Unless, unless the moon's getting ripped apart. That's pretty cool. No, that's fun. It's uh, all we, fun. We like this Let's launch. Let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see that it's, it's uh, distant. Oh, here we go. Come on, you can do it. Come on, you can do it. And Phobos takes a hit. Ready? Boom. Ow. Oh, and what happened? And it all only goes to what you control like speed wise like when the object gets closer to whatever it doesn't automatically speed up does it because of gravity yes it does i mean it, yes it, okay it, as it gets sure. it's just falling so it's accelerating toward it uh it's accelerating the whole time but let's see uh let's take io jupiter's moon io and I guess Phobos is actually uh, pretty small compared to Io. Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't even know what's there. All right. Well, that's good. So let's get rid of it and go back to Phobos. All right. And let's see here. Oh, I know. Let's do this. Let's hit Phobos with Deimos. What do you say to that? I say go for it. Go for it, yeah. Wait, is that Deimos? That's not Deimos. What the heck is that? Yeah, it is. That doesn't look like Deimos. 
thumbs up. Yeah, that's what Ted was saying about Phobos. Yeah. He said, that doesn't look like Phobos. And I said, well... Oh, well, this looks like Phobos. That is. doesn't... I'm not sure what's going on there. That's okay. I'll figure it out. But let's just watch what happens when these two mm -hmm. colliding planetoids hit. Things are going to smash. Who cares? Oh, but then we could just end the stream. Here we go. Oh, see? Not good. I mean, it did, it did splash. You see, it made this, like, crazy splash of material. See that? All the fragments. Thousands and thousands of fragments. And we're actually in a cloud. I don't know if you can actually see that, but it made all these fragments and these little circles show it. Yeah, well, when you move your mouse, I can see all the circles. That's crazy. Yeah, and those are all little fragments. Hmm, okay. Well, that's very unexciting. So let's do this new one again, and now let's do something else that we might be able to relate to better. How about this? Let's add a, another moon. Let's add a moon. Our moon. Ta-da! There it is. That, we recognize that. See, we're having our own P and K uh, here. So we can look at the moon here. Hey, there we are. Okay, we can play music and just do the same thing. But let's start launching random asteroids at it. What do you say? Okay. Yeah, do that. Random asteroids. And let's see how fast that's going to go. Once we start it up. That's pretty fast. So slow it down. The other thing, guys, if you once you get this uh, program, um, you can actually you, once you get this program, you can actually uh, hear some really cool sounds. It makes a nice. It has a really good sound. Wow, we're still going fast. But uh, I'll just get closer into it. This is cool. And I do have a new studio microphone set up, so that's why my voice sounds a little different. Oh, yes, this is fun. If you set too many at once, they will collide with each other before they get to the moon. Like that, see? Oh, oh no. No, you oh, don't. Oh, look what you've done. What is you. this? Why is this? This is an error, man. This is nothing that I... This is a bug. And I'm going to actually take a screen print of this. And uh, I took a screen print, so I'm going to send this to the developers. Say, what's going on, guys? This is not right. Yes, this is not right. Never happened before, ever. So I'm not sure what it is that's caused it. Wow. Crazy. All right, well, yeah, this is, this is, this is really terrible. This is all kind of new. I never had this before happening, so this is really bad. I don't know why this is happening. Now, are there any storms in your area? Yeah, I want to just get this done. No, I don't have any storms. Oh my gosh. Mm. Wow. Okay, well, I know what I'm doing now. What? I'm getting rid of it, and I'm going to start it over. Or not. Mm -hmm. Please stand by. That's okay. It's uh, Universe Sandbox. Wow. It's using a lot of... A lot of resources, too. Phew. Okay, now it's gone. And now you can see my, my, my whole uh, top here. The desktop. And uh, I think, actually, one of the cool things... That we'll do at some point. I'm going to show you guys. 
Uh, and I'm going to show you this right now. See, this is something I shot the other night, just to give you an idea of what's coming up with the sky through a live stream. This is a spectrum of Jupiter. But you'll notice there's these dark lines in it. Okay, these dark lines are from the sun's spectrum because Jupiter's reflecting the sun's light. But some of these lines are due to Jupiter extracting a little bit of the sun's light for its own purposes because it's absorbing some of the energy from some of the molecules in its atmosphere. These are called absorption lines. And we're seeing these lines. This, this line here is one of the lines of hydrogen. It's actually very, uh, very uh, much less um, noticeable in the sun spectrum than say in the star Vega. Uh, this line here, uh, down here, this is, I'm trying to remember what line that was in the Fraunhofer spectrum. Uh, but th th the bottom line is that there's many different lines here, and these are all the lines that are caused by the elements in the sun's atmosphere that absorb some of the energy from the much hotter radiation coming up from the interior of the sun. So effectively, even though that outer atmosphere of the sun is literally five, five to 6,000 Kelvin in temperature, um, the interior of the sun is millions, uh, it's, it's millions of, of uh, degrees in there. All right. And so when they're being so high in temperature, that comes through the gas on the outside of the sun and that five to 6,000 Kelvin gas in the outside of the sun is effectively a lot colder and cooler. So it absorbs some of the radiation and makes these dark lines. And those atoms that are in the outside of the sun's atmosphere consist of all the different atoms that the sun uh, was made with because most of these atoms that cause these lines cannot be made by the sun. It's not massive enough. Okay. So over here, there's uh, calcium lines. There's a pair of calcium lines here. There's magnesium uh, and other lines in here. There's some uh, uh, oxygen lines actually in here. And what happens is those were all elements that the sun was made with. Uh, so this process for seeing this spectrum, this uh, you know, creating this spectrum was actually the, the thing that I was doing with SkyTour Livestream Telescope. And uh, it's going to be one of the new things that we do with SkyTour Livestream. We're going to be analyzing stars and their compositions. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And that'll, that'll be coming uh, sooner than later. Uh, and give you an example of what that Fraunhofer spectrum is. This is the Fraunhofer spectrum. So uh, that line I was telling you about before uh, was this F line that I was seeing before. Uh, and that's the hydrogen beta line that I said. Uh, the line I was trying to remember was this double, this, this D, this <laughs> double D, this double D line here uh, was sodium. It's in the yellowish to the orange, and uh, in my spectrum, it was showing up in the red, so I wasn't sure if it was actually this C line, which was hydrogen alpha. Uh, I don't think so. But this much thicker B line, okay, which we didn't see was the oxygen line uh, that I had mentioned to you before that might have been in there. But this is, you know, this is the spectrum that we see in the sun. Uh, and this is a simplified version of it. And so when you look at reflected light off the planets, you're going to see this coming back to you, plus a few more lines in here that are caused by the planetary atmosphere. And if you subtract the two spectra um, of the sun alone and Jupiter, what's left over will show you the differences between the two spectra. And that's the kind of thing that uh, you know helps us do research to figure out what is actually in the atmosphere of Jupiter. Uh, but it only works for the outer atmosphere, and it doesn't tell us what's inside the planet. Um, and that's that's for space probes to figure out, especially when they go plunging into uh, the atmosphere. So anyway, uh, that's that. And uh, I should get us back in to... Uh, where is my universe sandbox? And I know it looks crazy. Oh, by the way, uh, this is the actual photo of Pluto that I wanted to show you. I, this is something I meant to show you guys before. Um... And uh, what we do is we have, uh, for our 3D printed craters, we actually have this whole area of Pluto right about here. All right. And uh, this is an area that we can, okay, that wasn't right. Uh, this is an area that we can print uh, 
in 3D. So we actually see all this relief and everything, and it really comes out nice. Um, and <clears throat> this is called Tombaugh Reggio. That's this area, uh, okay, over here. Uh, as part of a, the whole region is named that, but the Sputnik Planum is, is here. Uh, Tombaugh is, region, Reggio is named after Clyde Tombaugh, who was the actual founder of Pluto. Uh, he found Pluto uh, on images when they did a blink comparison between one and the, and, and the other, and they actually saw this little tiny white dot was moving in between exposures. And that's actually um, uh, the actual, that was Pluto finally discovered, uh, kind of where it was predicted. Well, you know, I sat with Clyde Tombaugh on uh, a, uh, uh, a hill in Vermont. Uh, we were at an astronomy convention, and, uh, and I sat there with him, and I, we talked about his discovery of Pluto. And the man was very humble, uh, very proud of the achievement, uh, but he never heard about Pluto being demoted to a dwarf planet. Uh, so as far as he went, he, he went to his grave thinking that Pluto was a planet. Uh, and frankly, I still think it's a, uh, you know, should be called a planet, if not for just cultural reasons, but because it has also five moons of its own. So it's actually fairly good size. You know, what say you, Amanda? I, well, I want it to be a planet, but I think it's pretty cool that it could be a, a captured planet or captured trans neptune planet yeah i was gonna say that because that's what series is called isn't it well series is a dwarf planet that's that's the thing they call it right but is so. it not a trans neptunian capture no series is an asteroid well it was an asteroid until it was uh promoted to a dwarf planet uh, status uh and that's something that uh you know yeah we have to figure that uh, Ceres was probably, um, Ceres was probably, uh, in a position of you know, having just the right amount of mass to be what would be considered a very large asteroid. So, uh, when the classification came out to call things dwarf planets, they, they went that route. Uh, so Pluto was demoted slightly from planet it was promoted from a small planet to a large dwarf planet. <laughs> so, um, it's, it's kind of a strange, uh, uh, kind of a strange thing. But and when we look at our solar system in this, again, this is the simplified version. You can actually see, uh, okay, this is the orbit of Mars out there. You actually see the asteroids circling. All right. And then, uh, and some of them are actually labeled. Okay. Like Juno. And Hygieia and Vesta and, and Pallas and Ceres. There's Ceres right there, as a matter of fact. And then beyond them, you have Jupiter. And Jupiter, this is this might actually help you see what I was talking about that one point. I'm going to just maximize. Um, we were talking one point about, in one of our Sky Tour radio shows, we talked about how Jupiter, uh, the presence of, didn't allow any asteroids to uh, coalesce and form into planets. Now, the reason is, as Jupiter's going around, see, the asteroids are going a little faster because they're closer to the sun. They have to orbit faster. Jupiter orbits slower. So, as it's going around, its gravity is tugging on the asteroids right here. And it's pulling them out, bulging them out. You can't really see that here, but that bulging factor that occurs happens every orbit as, it, as the asteroids orbit. So, the asteroids, as they come along, they go a little farther out and then get allowed to come back in. Well, that doesn't give them time. It's like mixing the pot. You know, it's like mixing concrete. As long as you keep stirring the concrete, it won't cure. As soon as you stop stirring, it sets up. And that's sort of the rough analogy for what I'm getting at here. Jupiter is stirring the pot and stirring the concrete all the time. And that's why these asteroids could never congeal and form into an object, uh, one extra planet. But you might say, well, well, what kind of planet would it have formed? I mean, well, it wouldn't actually have formed a planet because all of the asteroids together just add up to barely just under half the moon's mass, believe it or not. So we're not even talking about 
uh, a planet-sized object at all. We're talking about something that's much, much smaller. Isn't that cool? Very cool. So anyway, uh, that's that's there. And then, okay, well, then we have, of course, Saturn out there, and we have Uranus and Neptune. Uh, and you can see how far out Neptune is out here. All right. And now uh, we also have out here, we have uh, Sedna. Right, and Sedna is a uh, object which is very uh, remote. It's actually out in the Kuiper Belt, um, and so uh, you, you say, "Well, where's Pluto?" Well, Pluto is uh, also out here, but it's it's right now, it's right there, All right. And if you look at how Pluto's orbit looks, okay, it's sort of on a a tilt to our solar system. You see that? And that's part of the problem that people have had and astronomers have had for a long time is if Pluto is a planet that was formed here in our solar system like this, why has it got this tilt to it? Why is its orbit tilted to the rest? And that's what prompted people to think that maybe Pluto was a captured object from way out past Neptune, out in that Kuiper belt that's way out here, which is not shown. Um, and if that's the case, then that's why Pluto has this tilt that you see here. There it is. It's got a strange tilt, and, and when you're flat on with the rest of the solar system, Pluto's got this odd angle. And that's, uh, you know, it's like a 17 degree tilt. So clearly, uh, there's something odd about Pluto, no doubt. All right. Um, and when we look at, for instance, if we look at Eris, which is another one, okay, we see Eris, a, a Kuiper belt object. Look at its orbit. Compared to, the, remember, the sun's not way in the center of all this complexity, right? Look at that. Eris has also got this strange tilt to our solar system. Sedna, on the other hand, uh, Sedna has a, a strange orbit. It's, it's also got a slight tilt, as you can see. But Sedna actually has this very large orbit, okay? has this very large orbit uh, compared to everything else. So... It's got like one of the bigger orbits, you know. So, oddly enough, um, you know, Pluto seemed to match more of these Kuiper Belt objects out there than the planetary objects in here. And so, it was with uh, with much ado that they actually made Pluto uh, this this dwarf planet. And actually, um, Universe Sandbox allows you to see clearly how that. Uh, uh, develop because there's the plane of the solar system and when you back out there's the plane of the orbit of Pluto and that's exactly the kind of thing that you know matches all these other objects out there in the Kuiper belt they're not all flat to the solar system like the planets are but you know that's that's uh what this is good for this this uh simulator is really good for uh and if anyone has anything else they want to see smashed let me know um, Amanda, I'm not in the chat, so maybe you can tell me if there's anybody that's got anything that they'd like to see busted up. I don't think there were any other smash-ups, but there was another question. Let me just get back to it. Well, if, if people are over P and K, that's fine, because uh, I'll just end the stream anyway. But this is, it was kind of fun to do Universe Sandbox for a while. I thought it would okay. include everybody. Yeah, Ted Ted wants to know. Yes, sir. Ted. Um if you're standing on the moon, yeah, and something hits and explodes, would the explosion create any gas or medium in which sound could be heard? Oh, that's interesting. You know, that's uh, his, his question actually is a, a good one because um we know that when a star goes supernova, um it creates this environment where sound can travel for a time uh, because the gas and dust is so dense initially that the sound will in fact uh, be something we could hear if our ears weren't being burned off of our head at the same time as our skulls were being melted but you know uh, for a moment you'd, you'd, you'd hear it and say oh I heard it and then you'd be dead but still um, you know, on the moon I don't know. It depends on the uh, size of the impact. And I would guess that the answer would be no for 99.999% of the time. 
But I would also think that if enough stuff was thrown up, you could actually, uh, you could actually uh, hear something. It was a matter, of, not just dust. It would have to be uh, a lot of gas through which a compression wave that is sound uh, could actually travel. Um, and that's just uh, my feeling. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know if the program can do this, but it would be pretty cool if it could, and maybe it can. Uh, Ted also wants to know, can you smash Andromeda and the Milky Way? Well, they're going to smash, yeah. aren't they? I mean, well, that's why I thought it might be possible, but I don't know. Ooh. <clears throat> Shall we do a galaxy collision? I think we should. Okay. Um, about Brace four, yourselves, everybody. About four billion years from now, the Milky Way galaxy will collide with the Andromeda galaxy, and that's just what this simulation is going to show. Now, there's a lot of theories as to what will actually happen when that merger occurs, but check it out. Okay. First and this all, is just the best theory. Yes. Um, well, this is actually a um, gravitational analysis that's showing this. Okay. You can see that uh, the Milky Way uh, in, is kind of warping up, and the Andromeda galaxy is also like cupping a little bit in here. Uh, and then we see some uh, disruption occurring in the center. Okay. Uh, we see stars and, and, uh, well, we see all kinds of stuff going on in here. But watch what happens now. If we we speed this up just a little bit. Okay. You'll see that the galaxies are, are somewhat merging. Um, and this is what I find interesting about this. Okay. If you watch this now. Let's just go really fast. So you can see there's stuff getting ejected. Okay. And we're up at the maximum speed that we can go here uh, with the simulation. But you'll notice that there's uh, these red areas. These red areas are areas where star formation began. These are H2 regions, the hydrogen, the ionized hydrogen regions the, that we've talked about so often. Um, and this is the result of shock waves uh, that are res the result of the collision and merger. Now, at a stellar scale, down at the star level, when you actually look at what's going on at the star level, um, no star collided with any other star because there was nothing like that here happening. Believe it or not, it looks like things should have collided left and right, but they don't because the distances between them are really quite far apart. So you won't see and get any collisions like that between stars. I mean, we did eject some gas over here and more over here. But boy, this is something else, isn't it? Well, I guess both galaxies have the same elements in them. Would anything be created by the merge? <clears throat> well, both galaxies do have stars which made elements in their core, sure. But... um. You know, the stars in the Andromeda galaxy are roughly similar to the stars in the Milky Way galaxy. But the Andromeda galaxy has about a trillion stars. And the Milky Way has between 100 and 400 billion stars. So it has a lot less stars than the Milky Way galaxy. I'm sorry, than the Andromeda galaxy. But this is what we get, see? Uh, this is the result. And, of course, it's ongoing. And I can't... Uh, I, if I reduce the number of particles, I could probably do better. Uh, but I let me see if this gives me a choice. Uh, fragments. Turn off fragments. No, it doesn't help me. Uh, there's no collisions. Uh, that doesn't help me. <clears throat> Turn off. I can actually change the level. I can change gravity throughout the universe. That'd be fun. <coughs> Sorry. Um. Oh, look at that. Wow, look at that go. So, uh, I don't know what I did here, except uh, I must have modified the simulation by accident when I brought up this this here. That's pretty cool. But you'll see what's happening is it's actually, uh, you know, we're watching the, uh, the galaxy collision make a new galaxy as a result. 
crazy. It is. It really is. <coughs> yeah, it looks sort of like a, a boiling cauldron of stars, doesn't it? Look at that H2 region right there going around. You know. Well, that's cool. <clears throat> but anyway, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> my voice is going, so I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, say good night to all of you now. Uh, and I just wanted to thank you for joining us on this stream. And uh, thank you, Amanda, for coming in and hanging with us. Oh, this is always fun. And it's good, you know, if you're... Uh, <laughs> you know, clotted over or not good uh, weather conditions, this is such a valuable tool to have and to show us, you know, what you can do and how to do things. It's, uh, it's fun. I mean, it's, it's a great learning tool, but, like, smashing things is fun, but you're actually learning, too, and right. in a sneaky way. Yeah, that's true. But it's like, a... what would happen if? Well, let's try it and see. It's, yeah. it's fun. I think you should all go out and get Universe Sandbox 2. And before I forget, I just want to say, good night, Paul. <laughs> um, yes, you, know, you can go over to PNK Space Imaging and check out the moon. I think they said something about Venus, possibly, but... Uh, not Venus, Jupiter. Venus uh, set, you know, uh, after sunset. Uh, but I'm sure they talked about um, Jupiter. Well, we took in a lot. We saw a lot of things, so I'm probably confusing something. Well, that's okay. And we're going really fast here in this simulation. It's crazy. But you know what? That's over several million years, right? Now, this is... This is about 8,000 years per second. You don't see any crazy movement, do you? But 8,000 years per second is passing right now. Isn't that crazy? So it tells you, you know, that these stars, everything in here in the galaxy is moving. And over a course of 8,000 years, you can just barely see something here moving. Uh, so that's why we, were not, we wouldn't see any stellar collisions and so forth. Because everything is moving at a rate where um, it's so slow to our eye because it's so big in scale. And when things are big in scale, there's uh, <clears throat> there's less likelihood that you're going to get uh, these tremendous interactions when that you get with smaller things. Now, yes, stars can get yanked out of clusters and so forth, but gravity is the only thing here that's causing anything of uh, importance, really. Um, unless we actually have a bunch of supernovas that occur at the same time, those will send out shock waves that could rattle some cages and of course uh, you know cause other things to happen uh, but I want to just uh, leave you with one one more thing we're gonna we're gonna just start one more uh, let me go back here and just say new <clears throat> all right and I just want to add uh, a couple of interesting stars now we're paused okay good I just want to do this. I want to put in our sun. Okay. That's our sun. And I think you can actually... I think you can actually hear it. It's actually rumbling. And you can see how it actually has a surface that's moving and doing some crazy stuff. Okay. And then... Let's put in Proxima. Okay, and we'll even have it orbit. <clears throat> but it's not going to actually do any movement. Uh, actually, it may. I don't want to do that. I want to stop. Okay. Alright, so this shows you how big Proxima is compared to our sun. Pretty cool, huh? And if we want to see it, then we just show it by this. There's a way to show it here with this uh, chart. A mode. It shows us the size of our sun compared to Proxima Centauri, which is also the star. I think that's amazing. Now, if we come back from this uh, out of the chart and we go back to what we just created. Now, let's add another star or two. Let's add Betelgeuse. 
<clears throat> this is how big Betelgeuse is compared to our sun. Okay. Look at that. Here's our sun. <laughs> and there's little Proxima that our sun dwarfs. And here's Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse, of course, is the bright red star in the upper left of Orion. And uh, it's crazily, um, I don't know, this is just a uh, tremendous eye-opener when you see this. You know, we're not going to actually uh, cause anything here, but look at you can actually see the convection cells on Betelgeuse operating, which are really, really amazing. So now... Uh, <clears throat> let's go out a little more uh, and let's add another star here I'm looking for it uh, let's add UI Scooty yeah, and this is um, I'm not sure what Ted is asking he says is that smaller than Earth I guess, I guess he means Proxima Centauri <clears throat> oh yeah Proxima Centauri is not smaller than the Earth you, uh, I'll, I'll get back to that in a sec. UI Scooty is one of the biggest stars in the universe. Uh, and if you put it in our solar system, uh, well, let's do it, shall we? Because uh, I believe that UI Scooty would actually go out to the orbit of Jupiter or so. Uh, and here we have Proxima, all right? And Proxima is, of course, way bigger than the Earth. But look at the size difference of the stars. Now, remember, stars are powered by hydrogen, so this is... This is an amazing thing, okay? Uh, this is just unbelievable. So now let's go back and let's say new again. No, oh, let's say by open. the way, he meant Betelgeuse. Uh, what did you ask about Betelgeuse? Is it smaller than Earth? Betelgeuse? Betelgeuse is bigger than our sun. I, well, I know. That's why I Maybe thought he was you're... confused. Because you would you wouldn't you wouldn't think about uh, I wouldn't think that's the you know the, the way it should be. Uh, now, how can I replace the sun with Betelgeuse? Hmm. There's got to be a way. I'm actually not. Uh, there must be a way of doing this. Actually, I have not researched how to do this. There, there, I, I was thinking there might be a way to do it. Uh, I, this could change the name, but it won't change what it is. I don't think. I don't think it'll do like an automatic search and replacement. No, it's just going to be a name thing. I'll investigate that for next time. How to replace the sun with another star. But uh, if we... If I were to take Betelgeuse and put it in here, uh, it would go out uh, probably to just about Mars. All right, Mars orbit. <clears throat> and then UY Scooty would go out to just about... Jupiter's orbit here so that, that's a very big star uh, but I'll research that because you know Universe Sandbox 2 which you should all go out and get um, is really fun to, to examine fun to play with and fun to investigate science with as long as you keep within the parameters of the accuracy otherwise it'll tell you things you can't possibly imagine are true because they're not anyway <clears throat> I hope you all had a good time tonight. I enjoyed your company. So all of you, don't forget to head over to p &K. And also, if you haven't done this yet, please subscribe to DannyFan1, which is, of course, oh, Amanda's me. YouTube channel. Uh, Amanda's going to be doing some interesting work in the next uh, couple of days, I think. You're going to upload some videos? Uh, I don't know. I'm so tired now. I was going to work on it after this, but oh. okay. Well, if by miracle I'm done by tomorrow, I'll be doing a new, uh, uh, a new live stream and uh, maybe yeah. maybe a weekly weekly after that for a month or two. Awesome. We'll see. And she's going to be uploading uh, in the form of either video or it'll be a live stream or a combination, a hybrid. Um, That's what I'm thinking. I might I might do a video and watch it with you guys on a live stream. Um, that is, if anyone likes American Ninja Warrior, that's what uh, that's what this next little rant of mine is going to be about. And uh, and Gish Wish is coming back at the end of July, so I'll be streaming about that later too. Oh, why don't you and, uh, tell them what Gish Wish is? 
I thought we were going to bed sometime soon. Okay. Uh, Gishwish is the greatest internet scavenger hunt the world has ever seen. Wow. And it's all for charity, and it's really fun. But I'll get into more of that on, on an upcoming stream. Cool. And just in case you're wondering, you can see this is Betelgeuse kind of superimposed on our solar system. Uh, and I'm trying to see how to get it. There's got to be a way to place it in our solar system. And if I actually create it here, it's going to collide with the sun. And we're going to get this massive conflagration. But you can see right here that Betelgeuse goes, would go out past Mars. Uh, that's actually quite a big star. Uh, and then let's go look at UI Scooty, and that'll be the last thing we do um, for bed. UI Scooty, <laughs> look how far we go out. Remember? Oh, actually, uh, I guess it goes out beyond Jupiter's orbit and partially towards Saturn. So that's a star. Can you believe that? How a star can be that big. And that's just has to do with the amount of mass that the star can gather and mostly hydrogen gas. I'm just very, very impressed with something like that. But let's let's make it here. Why not? Here, ready? Boom. Ooh, we just wiped out the whole solar system. See, it's so <coughs> sad to realize how little I really know about this because oh, I that. guess I just kind of always assumed, you know, <coughs> planets were massive and stars were tiny little dots that you could see in the sky. But oh, We're taught to believe that. Look at Saturn. Saturn is uh, intensely uh, heated up and it's heading for the surface of UI Scooty. Man, that's not going to survive. Do you know, we actually, there's some exoplanets that actually are doing this just as Saturn is doing now. You can see the outer layers of the atmosphere of the star already affecting it. Um, and uh, it's so close to the star, this other one, that this real planet, this real exoplanet, that it's actually, uh, and those are flares, yes, but we're in accelerated mode. Uh, it's so close to the star that what happens is you don't, um, yeah, the, the star is evaporating the, the planet's atmosphere and it leaves like a cometary trail behind it it's really something uh, this is just ominous <laughs> alright so uh, I'm going to go accelerate it again just to watch the end and then uh, and we're done boom it's in there it's and you'll notice that Oh yeah, look at and all these other, look at Uranus is coming in, Uranus is sailing into its end. That's what happens, you know? And then if we delete the star, uh oh, where'd it go? There's a big gaping hole in the middle of the solar system where there was used to be a star. So it's pretty cool. All right, folks, I want to thank you. Thanks a lot for coming along uh, for the ride and I will preserve my voice and also preserve the rest of your night for you so good night and have a wonderful next day and uh i'll see you hopefully on a sky tour live stream with amanda looking at real stuff in the sky until then keep looking up and make sure you think about going over to see p and k space imaging and look at the, the lunar stream tonight and i'll talk to you over there perhaps see you later <laughs>